Good evening, everybody, and welcome to a special Comic Art Spotlight on this fine Tuesday evening. I hope everybody had a fun night last night watching the amateur dueling dealers of Comic Art. That was uh, a bit crazy, but I think everybody had a good time. Many people, not enough people walked away with art. There was uh, a few people who were much faster on the draw than others, but I think in general, everybody had a really good time. Dino had a fantastic night. He uh, set a record as far as total sales, which was pretty crazy. And both Jordan and Dino combined for $45,000 in sales, which ended up being our second highest figure ever. And I believe we had around 225 people watching, which was also our second highest uh, show count for a live show, which was pretty amazing. So I wanted to, before we bring everybody in, I wanted to kind of give you an update on a couple things schedule wise. Of course, tomorrow night is the, the 10th Dueling Dealers with Mike and Anthony. And then I've got a, uh, another Comic Art Fans update on Thursday with collector Craig E. Then next Monday, I have a special chat going on that I'm not a part of. It will be Scott Doonbeer and Alan Weiss at 9 p.m. Unless they change the schedule. Right now, that's their plan. And so they're going to be on the Comic Art Live channel at 9 p.m. next Monday. And then I'm finally able to announce that I'm doing a special sale on April 17th at 11 a.m. Eastern Time with uh, Gerhard from Cerebus and Dave Sim, of course. And I'll be doing that. Uh, with Gerhard and Chuck Costas. And so it'll be a, I'm not quite sure, it's not going to be exactly like a claim sale like we've done in the past with uh, Dueling Dealers or any of the things that I've done with Anthony. Um, we're still working out the details, but that should be about an hour long show, maybe an hour and a half, a little bit interview. And then Gerhard is just pulling some things out of the vault that no one's ever seen before. It'll be everything from covers to interiors to splash pages. So that'll be really interesting. I've never had the chance to talk to Gerhard before, so I'm looking forward to it. And I think that, uh, you know, it's just another facet to the show that we're trying to add in there and people are approaching me with, with ideas and I thought that would be a really uh, interesting one to try. And as far as interviews go, he's somebody that I've always wanted to talk with. So I think that's going to be a good time for everyone. So let me uh, bring in, let me first get James and Khalil in here. Everything's working. Okay, good, good. We got James and Khalil. Hey, so guys, uh, Everybody knows uh, tonight you guys are guest hosting with me, and I think that that's fantastic. I've been wanting to, uh, you know, not pass the baton to somebody else, but bring some more people into here than, than the usual crew. And I think that having you both on is fantastic. So um, I hope that you guys feel the same way. And, you know, we might as well at least mention it now that at some point in April, probably mid to late month, we are going to do a Sunday evening show. It's going to be collectors only, just a collector focused show where we talk about uh, just any of the issues that people would like us to talk about. We're going to do a poll for those topics and see Khalil dropped out again. Uh, <laughs> he's going to have to change his phone or his, uh, his webcam. We'll work that out though. But uh, so again, Tuesdays or Tuesdays, Sundays at some point, we'll be doing this uh, special show with James and Khalil. Khalil will have a better camera going on at that moment i think i think he's uh here i'll just remove him until his his image pops up on the uh, lower screen for me but uh so james I'm, I'm glad you wanted to do that with me i just wanted everybody to know it and i think it's gonna be a lot of fun i mean we haven't really talked about the whole format we're still working it out but uh, but i think that you know having you and khalil and khalil's back here again all right there we go <laughs> Hey, if, yeah, if there's an issue, I'll, I'll, I'll jump off and figure it out and come back. So, sorry about that. I don't know. It's, it's sometimes we're th this uh, dead zone sometimes at my house here in, in AZ. Once in a while it happens. Oh. Well, not a problem. Definitely, uh, I always recommend for everybody to be wired to the internet if they can, because sometimes Wi-Fi can get flaky. And that what you're experiencing right now is exactly what happens when your Wi-Fi goes a little off kilter. So, uh, so let me bring in our guests this evening, Wonder Effing Woman and Dark Phoenix. How, how are you ladies doing this evening? We're doing great. Uh, Thank you for inviting us, Bill, and thanks, James and Khalil, for, for co-hosting. And um, by yeah. the way, I did want to say that we've both been vaccinated, so we are, in fact, doing the CDC guideline <laughs> um, and being together. So wear a mask, social distance, but, but we're okay because we've both been vaccinated. Fantastic. I have not yet been. I know, James, you, you, you got your first one or something, I believe, right? Yeah, I'm two weeks post vaccinated and um, it feels good. You know, part of my my job is, you know, seeing customers and uh, have it in a year and a half. So new normal starts next week. I've got a scheduled lunch. I get to use the, co the corporate card for it. So looking forward to it. 
Awesome. Yeah, I'm shuffling the cards around here. There, that's better. Sure. Uh, <laughs> what about you, Khalil? Have you, have you gotten them yet? You know, what? luckily I, I have. Uh, just th through work, I volunteered at a uh, uh, event where we had some of the, uh, I think at the time it was 65 plus, you know, an event at a uh, clinic around uh, here in Phoenix where I was basically directing traffic for people to get their shots. And at the end of the day, they gave those that were helping out the opportunity to, to get the vaccine if they chose to do so. So, so I did. Yeah. That's awesome. So lucky there. Yeah. Hey, so Bill. Before, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just have the up? opening question, the, the opening question to set, because I want, I want drama on the show. So, uh, Jill, Wonder Woman, Casey, Phoenix, I know you guys have been friends for a long time. Who's going to win in a one-on-one -on -one fight? <laughs> oh, wait. And Are you amongst yourself? Or the characters? No, the characters, the character. Well, I mean. I say both. I say I, both. Both. I, can go the, I was looking to go that direction, but. Uh, if you guys want to throw down, but no, from a character perspective. It's, well, I think every, I think a lot of fans, collectors, comic fans are are kind of partial to either Marvel or DC. So I say take your pick, depending upon which uh, which it company could, yeah. you tend to favor. But it of course, Wonder Woman would kick her butt. I mean, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. right. All right, Bill, I won't interrupt again. Oh, no, no. Well, I figured I was going to get through the question at you so that, that, that I asked you earlier. Uh, somebody asked you if you're wearing, wearing makeup, but also somebody asked no, you lighting. if you are sitting in a bunk bed. So Okay, I will answer this question. The answer is yes, and this is the reason. It's a COVID protocol. Um, so I'm in the guest room, and it is a loft bunk bed thing, kind of like a college dorm, because my five-year-old son is using the office for elementary school. So I got kicked out of the office um, so that, you know, we could do remote learning, distance learning and have, have him in a kind of in a closed room. So it, it's hilarious. You know, I feel like I'm, you know, back at uh, college and I got, you know, my, all my shelves and my alcohol with me. So you know, it gets me through the day. So it's not the kid's room. Uh, no, it's it's workout. It's where I put my art. It's a guest room, a modified guest room. And now, you know, it's going to be my office for foreseeable future. <laughs> and and uh, yes, Daryl's question is about uh, dubbing your voice. You're, you you do look like you're being dubbed this evening. Don't know why, but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It makes for a lot a, a more fun interview for us all. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I don't know who would like to start off, but we always do the uh, origin story. And maybe, maybe this is a joint story that, you know, you, you both have to tell. But it, when did you both? Because I, I, I looked at your calf galleries. And so I know what, about when you started really yeah. posting artwork. But the creation dates on your calf galleries are very different. So I'm kind of curious how you both got started collecting original comic book art. Why don't you go? OK. Oh. I mean, I so I didn't really jump into comics at a young age. It wasn't until later. And then my husband took me to a comic con and it was actually in Richardson. Um, it was 2010 and Adam Hughes was there and I really wanted to go see him. And so I stood in line and I didn't tell him anything. I barely talked to him, but I did buy a print from him. And I know my, my husband's like, you should really like tell him how much you love him. And like, no, I can barely talk to anyone. I'm just gonna buy this, say, great, thanks. And so then it wasn't until like 2013 that I started collecting art and it was at the Dallas comic, like fan expo. And, um, but my favorite part is in 2013, which was also the same year that I got my first commission. I also walked up to Phil Noto's table, like in the middle of the day on a Saturday. And I said, hey, Phil, can I get a commission from you? And it was like, I might as well have been laughed out of there. He was very kind. He goes, oh, I'm, I'm really full right now. And I was like, oh, okay, great. But I was so new at it. I didn't know that you had to like maybe email him, maybe let him know beforehand. But I was just like, hey, can you draw me some art right now? So that was like my biggest like regret that I didn't know that because Phil Noda was here and I would have loved to have grabbed something from him. But you live, you learn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He would have been a, a good a good one to get. Yeah, first off, but uh, but it's true. Phil's list always fills up early when he's at a show. Yeah, mm -hmm. And you met, you mentioned um, going to a con, excited to see Adam Hughes. So that all came from somewhere, right? So so how did you get interested in this this stuff in general, right? This geeky stuff we all we all dig. 
here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I always like loved She-Ra when I was a little girl, and then yeah. it was Dark uh, Dark Phoenix Saga whenever it came on, like X Men, the you know cartoon mm -hmm. series, the Batman animated series. I always loved watching that stuff, and then all of the Batman movies, even the ones that were quote unquote bad, to me they're still good. I love them. And my dad and I, we used to watch the Batman 66 and he'd say bam, pow, and always read that, you know, for me. And so, but no one ever put a comic book in my hand ever. So it wasn't until like probably 2006 or seven that I went and started going to a comic book shop. And I was like, this is where I was supposed to be. And I didn't know it, but I enjoyed the other, you know, cartoons and movies, so. So after striking out with Phil, what was <laughs> what was your uh, your first art purchase? It was actually someone I could just walk up to. Um, it was um he was a, a he was down south, right? His name was um change. Oh, he was um John, John Hughes. Hughes. So it's J O N Hughes. Mm -hmm. And I just walked up and I said, I want a dark Phoenix, a not so dark, dark Phoenix. So I didn't want her to be angry and, you know, so he did a beautiful piece. And I actually, it was one of my first professionally framed pieces other than of course my Adam Hughes print that I got, but mm -hmm. he drew it for me. So I was able to like, just walk up and grab him and he may not be some big, you know, name brand person, but I really love it. I'm still hung hanging on my wall. Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. what, about <laughs> what about you, Jill? So I, my story is a, a different from Casey's. So I remember I was a kid of the eighties and one of the awesome books I had, there was a book with cassette tape. If you guys remember, you could play the cassette tape and it would read the book to you with all the sound effects and voices and everything was Wonder Woman and Cheetah on the Prowl. And the art in that book, um, was Ross Andrew and uh, Jake Giordano. So how, like, what better way to start than, you know, two legends of comic art. It wasn't technically a comic book, but it was my introduction to, you know, my favorite character. And then from then on, um, I mean, I've been reading comics since about 2006, like, t like having my own sub with my husband, but um, really the first book, that I had and read, it was Trades of ElfQuest. I mean, 80s kid. Uh, my older sister had a really good friend who had them and loaned them to her. And, you know, my sister liked them, but wasn't really into it, but I saw them and was like sucked in. So um, actually one of the original art pieces I have is the reason why I decided to share it is because of that story, because ElfQuest was the first thing to really get me into comic book reading, although it wasn't your typical Batman, Superman, Spider-Man kind of story. But we did watch um, Batman 66, did, you know, watch all the movies. I had a Batman and Robin poster on the back of my door in my childhood room, even though I know it's George Clooney and everyone laughs at that particular yeah. movie. I mean, it had Bruce okay. Ivy, so. Did it have nipples on the bat suit? Did the bat suit have nipples? It had nipples on the, and they, and they showed the butt on the bat suit, and you know, but I still liked that movie a lot. And well, you know, and of course the other Batman movies, Christopher Reeve and the Superman movies, watched them all as a as a kid. So, um, but yeah, but been reading books since about two thousand and six. Casey and I have been friends for about fifteen years. Um, partners in crime. I mean, we we say this all the time. We met through our husbands, but. I would have found her and she would have found would me. Have found her. We would have found each other. It would have been at a con. It would have been shopping somewhere. It would have been who knows what, but we're mm -hmm. partners in, in comic art collecting and partners in crime in real life and, and in the comic world. So it's worked out well for both of us. We have stories you'll, you'll, you'll hear it's worked out. <laughs> well, you know, keep drinking. We want to get them out. I'm just kidding. No, it's, it's all hydration. We're they're, not going to do anything. They're PG stories. <laughs> so I know, uh, you know, we're part of a Zoom chat group, and and, and one of the uh, the people, the leaders, will always ask an icebreaker question to the artist, like, "What's the weirdest commission anyone has ever asked you to draw?" But I'm going to flip it around and say, "What's the weirdest experience or that you've ever had either at a con or with an artist?" Pretty guard, Irving. 
<laughs> yeah. So we went to a con. So Irving Convention Center in the Dallas area holds a, a and um, we we're there and we you know we're excited to be there. But we have to walk past another convention. So like that's another event, mm -hmm. another event going on. You walk past it and then you get to the con. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there's always security guards like there. They're just they're just hanging out. They're just to keep the peace. And the security guard that we ran into was outside the con door, standing kind of close to the check-in table where you register, you get your armband, you you know they check you in for the show. And he was like, "Oh, what are you ladies here for?" And we're like, "The comic." Con. Yeah, he, he was just, basically like, "You you, you need to go that where way." We're going, and we're like, <laughs> no, "No, we're here. <laughs> we're going there." It was just, but I heard him, and I. I was like, I didn't answer him. And I looked at Jill and I'm like, I don't know if I want to answer him. And Jill's yeah. like, we're going here. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. We're, we, we know where we're supposed to be. It's mm -hmm. all good. Thanks guy. <laughs> nice. At least he didn't follow you down the hallway or anything. No, God, no. no. <laughs> we all know there's some interesting folks, but it's fine. It was all fine. We've had a lot of fun at cons. Yes, mm -hmm. for sure. Well, you know what? I mean, I want to get to some of the stories. So looking at some of the artworks that you gave me might be a good place to start. And I did set them up where they're alternating between, you know, between the Perfect. 10 that I got from both of you. Sure. So why don't we start with this image here? Wow. So this one is is one of mine. So Casey and I are, are partners in crime when it comes to comic collecting. So... <laughs> Think of it like you have a partner that's able to figure out, hey, this artist is having an opportunity. That artist is having a claim on Instagram, Facebook, you know, whatever it is. So this one was a Steve Root opportunity, um, summer, oh gosh. 2019. 2019, mm -hmm. he was coming to Fan Expo in Dallas. And I've been a fan of Steve Rude since he did, yes, the dude, mm -hmm. <laughs> since he did like Dollar Bill Man on before Watchmen. Um, so that's been a while, that's been a few years, but I just loved his art style, loved his his picture with um, Wonder Woman at the fair. So Casey had actually put her request in first, which you'll see her piece in a little bit, but then I put my request in. And what was really great about these pieces is that we signed up for our marker commission. Uh, yep. <laughs> really, this is not a marker commission. Uh, this is watercolor and colored pencil on this Wonder Woman. And he took the, the kind of day at the fair uh, concept seriously with the holding of the cat. She's holding a cat in that other piece. And I love this one. This is an 11 by 15. It's just. And he even showed her, um, Jill, the picture of. His daughter his holding daughter. a cat. He helped, had her daughter, his daughter, model. Yes, for that, and that was really kind of special. I know. And then Jane L told us that Steve just got really carried away on our pieces because uh, part of the reason was because it was female collectors who were requesting, and he doesn't these have a pieces. lot of female collectors. Yeah, so we just we just really lucked out. Um, and the other thing she told me is that that was his effort to look like Drew Struzan, and I'm like, I'll take it. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> See, I thought you were going to say that it was an accident and he didn't realize it wasn't supposed to be a watercolor. Oh, so he... it was a happy accident. Mm -hmm. um, Jane Nell even said, she said, I walked in and I saw him doing these and I said, you know that these are supposed to be just the market commissions. And he's like, I know. Yeah. yeah. So, so that piece um, that you just showed is actually in his 2015 to 2020 sketchbook. Oh, cool. Um, so if you happen to pick that up from Steve. It's with the picture of. With the picture his daughter. of his mm -hmm. daughter and, and kind of some of the story. So, um, yeah, I was really happy to have that piece. It's one of my favorites. It's beautiful. Yeah, I agree. I absolutely agree. And here's here was the uh, companion piece. Wow. Yep. Oh, man. I asked. So I obviously asked for a Supergirl, but I know Steve loves Marilyn Monroe and Norma Jean, and I absolutely adore her. When I was a little girl, for some reason, I just fell in love with her, and I asked for just a happy, smiling Supergirl looking up flowy hair. That is literally everything I asked for <laughs> at any comic convention. Uh, piece that I that you know I request and it's always the flowy hair and I just wanted her looking up and smiling and happy something about a smiling Superman and a smiling Supergirl and I think he nailed the the Norma Jean look I mean it, he had to you know been looking at a Moran photo from when she was doing her cheesecake pinups it's 
I was shocked because Janelle may have warned Jill that she was getting that a larger piece. And then he showed on Instagram, um, this, this kind of just laying in the background as he was unpacking for the Dallas con. And Jill's like, I bet that's yours. I was like, no, no, it's not. No, it's not. Yeah, it was. And <laughs> wow. It blew me away. Yeah. We even picked up these pieces and then we ended up going back to his table because I think we were so in awe when we first picked up the pieces. We were like, wait, no, we need to go back we and get a picture. Yeah, we couldn't properly like <laughs> assess and think and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it was like comic art high. So we, but when we came down slightly from the high, we needed to go back and be like, hey, can we, can we get a picture Grab with you? Pick. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and yeah, so we had to have a little fangirl moment. Oh, no, that's fantastic. I've actually never gotten a piece of art from Steve, and he's one of the people who I've always wanted to get something mm -hmm. from. So he will be high on my list when we can get back to shows. Yeah. He always abides. Yes, he does. Yeah. <laughs> Dude abides. <laughs> I'm with you, man. It's all good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, I got it, too. I just wasn't going to give in. Do another Gilligan mean, Bill. Oh no! I, there, none of those are loaded up for this evening. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice to James because he's a Sooner fan and I'm a Longhorn fan, so we're, you know. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I, I will tell you um, one of the regrets that I've had. You know, I'm in Oklahoma, fly over country, make your jokes, but um, you know, it's 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 a lot. It's tougher to get to some of the larger um, cons. Right. Uh, and my first con experience um, was a local wizard con. And let's just say it left a lot to be desired. But I have been able to go to the Dallas one. But all, all the major ones that you hear all the time, San, San Diego, New York, et cetera, I haven't experienced that, um, which is something I'm going to rectify now, you know, pandemic's lifting. But asking you guys, you know, when you go to your cons, you know, just kind of pointers like, what are some of the fun things to do? What are some of the things you guys try to accomplish? Have you, I think I, I saw a picture. Do you do like the cosplay? You dress up. How, how do you get in the scene? So we started cosplaying in twenty like sixteen. Yeah, no yeah. sooner. It was sooner. Was it no, twenty fourteen. We did. We did a. So it, it kind of went from realizing, okay, we want to cosplay. We want to have a good time. We we do it for the kids to take pictures with kids because they're precious yes. and they seriously think that i'm you, yes. poison ivy they seriously think i'm loki they or seriously harley quinn they're like harley quinn can i have a picture with you and it's like oh my gosh yeah so we started out as cosplayers and then just getting books signed and then we started to drift more into the original comic art so my tips mm -hmm. would be do, do what you want to do at the con. Is it signatures? Is it just meeting someone? Is it photo ops with cosplayers? Is it the retailers that are out there selling, you know, the books and the shirts? I mean, make it your own event. Do what you're interested in. Um, it doesn't have to be expensive. I mean, we've gotten free art. We've gotten $40 art. Um, those are some of my favorite pieces. Yeah. And also maybe make a couple of friends in like, you know, a comic collecting group and that way you don't have to get there as early as you need to and they'll pick it up for you. Yeah. We yeah. haven't cosplayed recently because it's been more of a priority to get to Artist Alley. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about when cons start up again, especially in the Dallas area, because we're we're lucky and live here to go um, and, and get the art business done on a Friday and then maybe do the cosplay on a Saturday. So because uh, we missed it so much, I we just, have just started thinking about it. It's like, man, I do miss the cosplay part, but the art thing has become our number one for now. But mm -hmm. you know, we never would go two days in a row. It's, it's exhausting. Yeah. And I commend people who can actually go like even three days. The whole weekend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My other no. tips are bring snacks. <laughs> bring snacks. What bring up? <laughs> yeah. Take breaks. <laughs> what, char what characters have you guys uh, dressed up as? Or is it just, you know, you have your set ones? Oh, well, we have a bunch of different versions um, of mm -hmm. Harley and Ivy. Our, yeah, our first Harley She's and She's obviously Harley. I'm <laughs> Ivy. <laughs> uh, we've done Wonder Woman, Stargirl, uh, Thor, Loki. Um, um, there you go, Bill. And then we just changed who, like, what, Bill, what do you like? Did you say there you Oh, he's Thor. <laughs> Thor. He's always he's, he's, Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. You were talking about the headdress of yeah. Thor, too. And, oh, man. Well, it's the preview yeah. picture for, the, for this broadcast, so you can see the Thor Loki. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, nice. I love it. 
that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's always funny. Items. That's his tankard of mead. That's right. Is it's there a full? Right. It's, a, it's empty, unfortunately. Oh. oh, oh. <laughs> but we also do a lot of different versions. We have a mostly with Harley and Ivy. We have a punk Harley and Ivy. We have like a geisha Harley and Ivy. We've had, um, mm. oh, just to Arkham Asylum. Arkham you did Asylum. Asylum. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I did. Uh, with Casey. Um, and that's the one that Amanda Connor saw. God bless her. I love her. Well, it's got cool. out she, behind her table. She sees this. She's like, let me take a picture. And then she gets in the middle of us and love she goes. <laughs> just too cute. It was cute. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we do different versions. Mostly it's awesome. Harley and Ivy. Very cool. Right on. Welcome back. Yeah, do you get around? Yeah. Hey, and Bill, sorry. Honestly, if it if this happens again, I'll bow out. I don't want to be interrupting. But, um, hey, but, uh, what's up? Nothing. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My, my, my question was, do you guys get, unless you, you might have answered this already, but do you get around to different shows in the country or do you stay to, in a local area? What are the shows that you frequent? It's the ones here. So it was the, it's the Dallas Conk show. Mark Walter show, um, is a love yes. because those can be very, um, intimate and, amazing and you can get some amazing pieces of art from artists that you normally would never he brings in cool. some beautiful big names but then you know the dallas fan expo that one's huge but that's our friday show because it is it's, it's exhausting crazy on a yeah. saturday mm -hmm. um and then i've probably seen you guys i i i lived in uh, dallas for six years i don't now but i did for six right. years so that was the show obviously i would always always get to and there was all there were the smaller ones too that had some so some big names in the DFW area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the North Texas comic book show. I know. RIP. Right. That was the last show that we ever went to in February yeah. of 2019. And it was, it, I mean, it was always beautiful. Mm -hmm. I was, that was the show that had some of the, the old school. I don't know. Can I use that? Ooh, Joe Giella. Ooh, that was the, the, the old, older school. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I've said that to a, a comic artist before. Oh, we did go to the um, Alamo City Con one time, and I did say that did. to him that, oh, my husband, I these are my husband's books, but, like, he doesn't read and collect anymore. I was going to get your signature. It was, like, the old school books. And he goes, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> old school. Like, I am so sorry that came out wrong. <laughs> you got to be, like, <laughs> silver age, well, bronze age. You got to kind of make it less, like, you're old. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Somebody come up to me and says, you know, you're looking really bron bronze age today. I'd rather hear old school. <laughs> At least that's not pretty cred. Yeah. I've got yeah, a lot true. of pieces from old, old skills, old school guys. They're still doing killer work and they're, they're some of the most affordable Jeez. pieces out there. Yeah. So yeah, man. Right. Yeah, that's very true. Very true. It's, yeah. It's just that they were, they were more like out there at one time right i mean it's as simple as that i mean it kind of known and in, in the zeitgeist i guess of our of our thing here at, at one point so a little less so now is, is that, yeah. but that's why we want to go get pieces from them so like you know sh shout outs to like mark stegbauer and mark mckenna bob mcleod kez wilson yeah Irwin. Mm -hmm. i mean all you know it's, Great work, fabulous. So that could Stunning. be another tip to, to folks that are just getting into the, the hobby and, and art collecting. Uh, Mike DiCarlo, like reach out to these guys that are still doing fabulous just work and you don't necessarily have to pay four or five figures for it. It's, no. just, it's great. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, I picked up um, a sketch of, of Red Wolf by Bob McLeod at the North North Texas Comic Show. It yeah. might have been five or six. Might have been six years ago. Yep, yep. Might have been the same one you all were at. Uh, yep. Probably. probably. <laughs> we got we a, go uh, all the yeah. ones. Yeah. All of them. They got a question in the chat. Like, what's um? I guess what's your most wanted art from a commission and or original art standpoint that you guys haven't been able to get yet? Oh, uh, Phil Noto. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think that's all. <laughs> I think you're, you're blacklisted. <laughs> okay, first of all, Jill can just get out of this shot. <laughs> Phil Noto, I have Phil Adam Noto. Hughes. I'm I have to, Adam Hughes. I'm trying hard not to flip her finger. <laughs> so, this is a family show. Um, <laughs> my list would be Sinkevich, uh, Kevin Wada. Yes. Kevin Wada. Um, 
I mean, Alex Ross would be my, uh, you I know, <laughs> but that's, that's like crazy money. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, those are my wants. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a good list. Yeah, certainly. Mm. <laughs> and Bill, do you have all of those people? <laughs> Uh, I, do have a, I have a Noto. I don't have an Alex Ross. Um, what was the other one? I'm sorry. Probably whatever it was, I don't think I have it. But I do Kevin have a Noto. Uh, I've got. I have two. Oh no, I don't have Kevin Wanted. No. Bill. Bill uh, Oh, uh, I do have a few pieces by Sinkevich, though. Yes. Sorry. Yes. All right. Not, not, well, not published, <laughs> published work, though. Not not uh, convention sketches or anything. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and, and hey, I, can I, do I, have, too, but I have the <laughs> and I just wanted to point out because there's one thing I was I was watching in the chat. I assume both everybody's watching the comments here in the in the green. Oh, okay. We're not. Uh, we didn't want to be distracted uh, just in case. Ah, okay. Well, I was distracted because there was something that was happening on YouTube that I wasn't quite sure why it was happening, and now I remember why. Because I do actually have a bot that mm. is reposting the Facebook posts over to YouTube, so the YouTube viewers can actually see what's being said over on Facebook. They don't, it, I can't send them by the other way. Mm -hmm. So that's what it, why I was doing that. So I, I apologize because I was sitting there scratching my head trying to figure out why is it doing that? And then I, I figured, you know, I turned it on as something I thought would be more fun for everybody on YouTube to enjoy the, the full conversation. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, I did just, uh, we just turned, we just turned them on, but we were trying to, you know, focus on you guys more trying to, but anyway. That's all right. I'm, I'm I, I had to break it up because I was I was scratching my head. I was about ready to shut something off because I couldn't figure out why I was doing it. All right. So anyway, sorry to interrupt. I, I do apologize. Uh -oh. We were asking you the questions, Bill. That, that is you. true. That is true. I can tell you, yeah. I know that one of the upcoming Dueling Dealer episodes has a Sienkiewicz sketch in it. And uh, it's, it's actually pretty nice. It's a female. I will say that. And, and I don't know and if it's tomorrow night, though. No, really. What's that? <laughs> yeah. Hey, claim it now. Claim it now. Claim it. Like <laughs> claim it now. Yeah. By That's the way, right. I'm Brian Tidwell. Right. Uh, we were supposed to tell hello to you, Bill, from Brian Tidwell. From Brian, yeah. From so Brian. Brian also, I mean, Brian says hi. Brian, Brian says hi. No, I haven't seen Brian in a, in a, in a very long time. Brian was actually at the first uh, San Diego Comic Con that I went to. And I remember he wore flip flops cool. and regretted it. So. Five days in flip flops at, at San Diego is not the way to go. So yeah. learned his lesson on that one. Exactly. And you mentioned Mark Walters earlier. Hey, Mark, you... Mark's a great guy. I've I've met him many times, and he's helped me during the Comic Art Live panel chat. You know, chats that we've had during the show. That so was yeah, one of our favorite chats. Yes. Whenever he helped, he is an amazing moderator nice. or he's awesome. co host, or he's just he's great. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, he's fantastic. I was so lucky to. Just think, you know, have him as an opportunity to, to host some of those panels for me. And he, he is, he's great. I, I told him he's got an open invitation whenever he's free to do panels for me for the show. He's, he's more than welcome to uh, take over anyone that he wants. Yeah, he's a good, he's a good host. Oh, nice. Hey, I wanted to ask, you guys both said Bill Sienkiewicz went bam, like right away. And when I think of him, most people have a character or like an era of comics or a particular comic in mind. Like what, what is it about him? It's like, okay, yeah, that, that dude is who we need something from. Okay, so again, back to the non-old school. What are we calling it? Bronze, New silver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, the Harley Ivy cover that he did was insane. And it just has yeah. Ivy hair and it's just flowing down. And for me, I know maybe I should go something classic, but... I really no, whatever whatever it is he covers. Mm -hmm. So he's got one for sale now where right she's on. got the pigtails and she's clearly taken the 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 hands off of someone and she's holding holding the hands their like hands this. to do this on her face. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. it, for me for me it's that he gets away with some stylized mutilation. And I, and, and I mean this in a positive way, creepy. That's mm -hmm. that's yeah. just different yeah. from every other artist out there. And you know, you kind of know it's a Sienkiewicz if you see a Sienkiewicz, which is which is also, right. I think, really telling and, and why someone's art style uh, really translates sure. to the fans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would if, agree if you with that. Sienkiewicz watercolor, you can't go wrong. Do you have a piece yeah. that you 
would love to have from him? Or do you already have a piece? Who are you asking? No, I don't, right? Khalil. Khalil. Yeah. yeah. So, so for me, right, when I think about him, I think about just the, the, the crazy flip he made uh, on that New Mutants run, right? Run, right? So he just kind of turned the whole, you know, um, it's not a history lesson, but the whole like look of the book and in general on its ear. And so there's a there's so many great examples from that. And one day may, maybe I'd like one, but I've got all these, you know, I've got these priorities, and you know that's not necessarily at the top. So you know, don't have unlimited uh, funds here. So yeah, yeah. I gotta yeah. figure that all out. All. But yeah, that's what I think of when I think him. Yep. Wow. Yeah, I, I definitely would like to get a Moon Knight page from from Bill one day. That's that would be high on my list, actually. Yeah. But, so uh, why don't we go to another commission story, or, or well, it may not be a commission. It's a, uh, mm -hmm. but it's a similar story for you both. Let's sure. Pull up this piece of <laughs> art. Oh, oh man. Okay, so this one is mine. Um, surprise, surprise! It's a Wonder Woman, and it's for Wonder Effing Woman, but. But really, honestly, I have to turn over part of the story to Casey because she gets all the credit in the world for helping me get this piece. Um, and, and her piece from Terry Dodson is actually also going to be in the broadcast. So, but I do want you to kind of tell how this came about because really you deserve credit. <laughs> oh, thanks. I, so, I mean, obviously this is stunning with the butterfly, which we can attest that butterflies are perfect. And that's probably one of the best parts of this piece. I absolutely adore it. I haven't seen any butterflies on any of his other pieces like this, but um, I reached out to him whenever he opened up his virtual con and I, you had to be one of the first 20 people who emailed him. So I had my email pre-written with the very specific details that he requires for any, any of his cons. This is for WonderCon, but this so, is, yeah, yeah, it was a WonderCon, but he was calling it a virtual con, but it was when WonderCon would have been taking place. And so I had all of my exact details written down and my characters chosen and I hit send. <laughs> and then I actually got an email back and he said, you are one of the first 20 emails that I'm taking and then nothing. And I would just watch an agony as people would uh, show off in the sketch price <laughs> group, like their Jerry dots yep. and I'm like, Oh, congratulations. And then on, you know, Instagram, he was doing these beautiful, uh, you know, uh, the process of, you know, drawing someone's commission and, Finally, uh, he mentioned something about doing another, some kind of con online. And so that's when I reached out to him on a Slack <laughs> and I said, so will I need to, you know, resubmit? And that's okay if so, because he was only supposed to be picking four to six from these 20 emails. And um, I am Dark Phoenix on Blogspot. So thankfully he knew exactly who I was. He was like, hey, did you ask for a Dark Phoenix? <laughs> and I said, yeah. And so he said, I'll circle you on my list and I'll email you. Let me email you. And um, yeah. that was April, but then it wasn't till like November. It was right before my birthday that I got my piece. And then um, anyway, we just, Jill and I were hanging out, having a happy hour one day. <laughs> and I was like, do. let's just email Terry, old Terry, you know, we aren't even on a last name. <laughs> it's, for, it's just first name. And so, I did. And he said, Hey, what would she want? And we all know Terry Dalton freaking loves Wonder Woman. Yes, he does. And so I said, Wonder Woman said, All right, yeah. great. And I forwarded the email. And so she was able to like sneak on to that. And I'm not gonna lie, I felt like a great friend. She was a great friend. I like the end of the wound off the couch she during, fell off the couch. Uh, during a happy hour. And just, uh, I gave him a couple of choices because you're supposed to secretly hoping he would pick Wonder Woman. And I also asked him to base it off of the Wonder Woman he did the San Diego Comic Con poster about. It's this beautiful, she's in a yep. white gown and she's just, it's, it's gorgeous. He did some remarks on them and and so he came up with this and i just i couldn't be happier yeah um, that, that flowy cape action is nice yeah the flowy cape the butterfly the look on her face i i remember asking him i i, I did ask him for a serene like powerful wonder woman and he yeah he delivered in spades that's awesome. beautiful yeah and you know what's what's great about dodson he's kind of got that 
I think of like Leonardo too, where it, they're, they're, it's not super polished, right? But I think that's some of the draw of it. It feels loose and kind of organic, uh, alive, I guess. I'm not sure if that's the right way to say it, but you really get that in a lot of his commissions, just like the one you showed. I do love to see someone as they take an eraser and, and erase off some of the lines and like that makes it the polished look, but I really do like to see some of any of the blue lines and then the red and marks. Yep. And just, well, and an artist nice like Terry Dotson doesn't ink. I mean, Rachel inks. So mm -hmm. you know, I think that there's something to seeing some of the unfinished pencils and to seeing some of the, you know, kind Absolutely. of raw lines that he has on his pieces. But, but anyway, this one, this one is Casey's, which it's hilarious in and of itself that it's an Emma Frost because Casey didn't used to like Emma Frost. <laughs> I hated uh -oh. Emma Frost. It had Dark Phoenix. I mean, God. B. Sorry, a I'm not. I'm not cussing. A frosty bee. A frosty bee. Um, <laughs> but reading a lot of the current comics, and she's kind of just a badass. I mean, she's a frosty bitch. She is, and I, yeah. I, I kind of just really enjoy. It. But the thing is, what I also enjoy is. The beautiful banter between Emma and Jean, and the thing, <laughs> Jason, Jason Coates, Jason comment. Coates, we love you, Jason Coates, <laughs> <laughs> and the things that they will say to each other, and it's not now just about fighting over a man. I think that maybe was what pissed me off the most in the comics. Um, they've kind of just come into, they've always been on their own, but just kind of separated from that and. I don't know. I just, I kind of dig her and plus I really like blonde. So, so I asked for some, something haughty. I asked for very haughty Emma Frost and I think I really got it. Yeah. There's no other way to do it. Uh, also, it I did request on. only a nine by 12. Oh, and he drew her on 11 by 14. Yeah. So, shh. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't <laughs> paying for that. I was paying for the nine by 12. So thanks Perry Dalton. Love you. Yeah. See, that was a happy accident too. You seem to be falling into happy accidents more often than not. I know the oh, first God. the first two stories uh, that we're telling seem about a, these pieces are just are not indicative of our normal. Mm -hmm. collecting. They seem a little too domino. We're too lucky right now. Yeah, that's not always the case, right? Mm -hmm. Cleo has dropped off again, unfortunately. Oh, I'll keep my eye out for him if he pops in on the uh, on the screen here. Sorry about that, Khalil. Like you said, James, you told him earlier, he's got to pay his uh, internet bill. Pay his internet bill. He, he did, so Khalil's just the master of the cameo. And if he can do it multiple times in the show, I mean, that just shows that skill. So he'll you know, he'll pop in, throw his three comments, jump out, and then jump back in again. He's a man of mystery. It's all right. That's right. Stanley, I love Dodson's run on Harley, too. Um, I, uh, I was very tempted to get a... Harley, but I did not. I was trying to be get out of my norm. Um, but you know, what's his name? Come on, give me the name. Um, by me in the animated series, what's called Bruce Mad Tim. Libs with Casey, but he's the one, um, Bruce Tim. No, he's the one who's doing Batman the, the animated series, he's doing the art on the comic books. Ben Temple, come on, what's his name? Oh, uh, Ty Templeton. Ty Templeton, thank you. This is normal. Sure. This is a normal one. Do this. I can't. I don't remember names, so she's gonna remember them for me. Um, I did get a yeah. beautiful um, homage to the Harley, where she's in her red dress and her leopard print, and she has the hyenas, and she's walking through town, and there's all the billowing smoke behind her. I do have a Ty Templeton that's uh, an homage to that Harley Quinn cover by Terry, so I do love that. That was my clue. Cool. Terry, until Terry, right? But it was a great one. Mm -hmm. So I know one of the, I have mostly published art. I don't do too many commissions and I've had a lot of challenging experiences with commissions. Um, and, you know, I hear you guys talk about the commissions and the stories and the meaning behind it and meeting the artists. And I think part of that is because you're so involved in the con, the con scene. So, you know, you have that face to face personal connection. Um, and I know like yeah, when Mikel was on here before, and I, I, know, I think you guys are going to share some too. The other thing that I've seen you guys do is commissions with a lot of personal meaning or personalized meaning. And I think that's what makes them special. So I think uh, I might give them another chance at, you know, when this con scene starts opening and, you know, see if I can get something where, you know, I mean, if I threw it up on eBay, it's like, who's that little boy uh, that, you know, is with the Hulk or something like, um, I wouldn't put it on eBay, but, you know, just personalized enough where it's special to me. So I'll give it a shot. 
Yeah, that would be awesome. I mean, I wouldn't do, I obviously wouldn't do those on all of them, but that's a, mm -hmm. those ones are just special sometimes. And especially if it's an artist that maybe you already have another piece from that you're like, oh, I want, you know, so that they can, you can stretch and do something different and maybe not, you know, your norm, your normal, you know, top five characters that you tend to go to. But um, for, mm -hmm. for us, it's, it's turned into a lot of emails ahead of time. And uh, I detailed, mean, e detailed emails. You don't want to get an email from me because there's going to be a lot of detail. Friendly <laughs> detailed emails. Um, and I know sometimes that, that in this hobby, we've, we've picked a hobby that fortunately being a female sometimes helps mm -hmm. the situation. But yeah, mm -hmm. we, you know, we try not to hear the, the oh, you know, showing up on a Saturday and your list is full. So we do, the majority of our commission requests now are, you know, hopefully prearranged. Um, gotcha. Hopefully, you know, we've, mm -hmm. we've already made a connection with an artist or able to um, set something up with him via email beforehand. And COVID has given us some opportunities that otherwise would never have happened. I've He's never been to a Texas never show. Never would have gotten a Terry Dodson had it not been, I mean, for this horrible, you know, virus. But, you know, that was kind of a <laughs> A nice little plus. Small, yeah. small wins, right? On, yeah. on uh, some happiness uh, here and there is nice. I know uh, yeah. my commission experience usually, um, you know, the time frame's three months and it's a year and a half later, but, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll kind of focus on, yeah. mm, on the positive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very true. Very true. I mean, what do you, you know, I've had commissions that I've gotten in a month and some that I've gotten in a year. I mean, you just can't tell. So you just have to. It's it's how you know that's the game you you have to expect you know if you, sometimes you're going to get lucky and sometimes you're not. The same things go with convention sketches too. You're not always going to get this. Even if you're on the list, you you may not get it during the show. They may not take it home to do them later. So yes. I've experienced all all of those. And and I can also say that uh, I've had very good luck having my wife go up and get on lists versus me going up and getting on lists. So. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just an idea, James. It does help. <laughs> my, fir my first Adam Hughes was uh, it was like a, it was a Father's Day show at Heroes, and you know I struck out three or four times in a row trying to get on his list. And she said, "I'm going to go and be first in line." And she wasn't; she was still like fifth or sixth. But he did do the sketch that uh, she requested. So that's awesome. I, I well, you know, I'm Amber's a looker, I must say. But actually, um, she wouldn't do it. I, I was trying to convince her to randomly pop in and hand me a pop tart like a cake um but you know to cut out play on anthony but i couldn't get her to do it um <laughs> i'll ask this though i mean it's kind of on, on the topic and um it's kind of cliched but you know this hobby is male dominated absolutely mm -hmm. um and so it, it is a tough question you guys bring a different perspective and so that's the question. how do you think your experiences in the hobby or at cons differ then uh you know because honestly you're, you're female and a hobby that's mostly dominated by male so when we cosplayed we there were always those two three people that we knew like oh there's that guy turn around run away <laughs> oh. because because we get the so you know that the version that you're cosplaying her belt is supposed to be this so that does happen um we we just roll with it. I mean, mm -hmm. we're there. Honestly, we're there for each other. We're there as friends. I mean, this this relationship is like I highly recommend have somebody with you at a con who's a buddy, a con wife, a con wife. Con <laughs> She's, we're con yes. wives. <laughs> I'll find me some yeah. con wives. Yeah, con wife. You've got someone to stand in line with. You've got someone. Hey, I'll stand in this line while, while you, you go to the bathroom. While you go, go to the bathroom, mother, you know, yeah. We were in a John Byrne line for an hour and a half at least, and it turned into you go see that artist, you go see that writer. I'll stand in line, and we just made it clear with the people around us. But in some ways, I realize it's a benefit to be a female because sometimes we get a little more chat, yeah, up front, like. You know, some we of course get the sign, hey bye, see ya, like move on through the cattle line. Yeah. But other times we get a little we get a little extra. Yeah. But then other times we're standing there and we see them giving extra to everyone. And so it, those are the people that I love seeing who just really want to sit there and chat and help yeah. a little group. 
Yeah, he's one of those people who likes to just chat with everyone. Bob Wyatchek. Yes, Bob And but just be prepared to stand in a long line. But mm -hmm. I mean, other times, like, you know, there's like, I love them. They're like, oh, you should you should be this person or you should cosplay this. And it's like, yeah. all right. Well, or it's Jimmy Palmiotti and he pops up and takes a picture of you and you're the only uh, Marvel characters he posts on his social media. I mean, so that that's just <laughs> fun. That I mean. Fun. We've we've learned to just move past some of the let's let's just say can we just say <laughs> what Jimmy Palmiotti said? And there's no cuss oh. words in here. No. Um, he just says, "Hey, an Asgardian wet dream," and he said, "Can I take your picture?" And it's like, "Okay, oh, hey, Jimmy, what? <laughs> yes, I have a page oh, for you. No. Why, yes, you can." <laughs> he cracked me up. Yeah, him and Amanda's relationship are just. It's a thing of beauty. So it's precious. That's, so it's, well, that's yeah. Jimmy through and through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we're okay. I would take it, it the wrong way if he said it to me, but. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but for us, it's okay. You just learn to roll with it. You learn to, you know, take it and move on or take. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. All right. Want to look at some more art? Yeah. Yes. Always, yes. <laughs> Bill, Bill, I think I'm okay now, but if I cut out again, it was nice talking with everybody. And I guess I'll <laughs> be, more, be more ready next time. Go ahead. Well, we enjoy having you, Khalil, for what, however long that we can have you. Um, so this particular piece is a John Lucas Poison Ivy. Um, obviously, with that's a Wonder Woman forearm you know, bracelet down there in the lower right. So Casey's an admin, and I'm a moderator for North Texas Comic Art Club. Um, a shameless plug on Facebook, but we do a yearly Christmas exchange and John Lucas is always, you know, high up on our hit list because every piece John Lucas does, we feel like we steal it. He's criminally low. Legend. Oh my goodness. Legend. I saw the comment earlier about we, they need to be called legends. So, um, while I don't <laughs> love that she's holding on to the, the golden perfect, she's got the lasso. I just love this piece for the story it tells in the piece. And um, my friend Matt Ducey gave this to me, and um, it was it was one of our exchanges in December of 2018. So that's why yes. I wanted to share this one, and just the detail in the background, the vegetation. Just I felt like the composition on this one was outstanding. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And I've uh, I'm in a lot of groups that do those kind of Christmas exchanges, but I've never actually per participated in one. I, yeah. I should, I should change that next year. Yeah, yeah. you should. Uh, it's, it's all timing for me. I'm trying to <laughs> find my way through all this, but uh, but I'm it's true though. I, but, way to make sure of some coal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> coal comes as charcoal on a fabulous black and white piece, James. <laughs> touche, yes. touche. That's right. That's right. All right. Well, here is another one. Oh, cool. Okay. Oh, Woo! This one's oh, this one. This is a story. This one is a story. So, uh, Jill and I, whenever we, uh, you know, we, we used to have happy hours on Wednesdays. And then um, during quarantine, truly, we, we changed them to Fridays because I wasn't working. Um, Jill was working from home. And of course, what do you do during quarantine when you can't go anywhere else? You like yeah, look up comic art always. <laughs> and so we're always like talking about comic art. So then yeah. during a happy hour, we were in uh, one of our pools and yours. We were just drinking and hanging out and talk. I mean, that's literally all I feel like we talked about every Friday during quarantine was comic art. And so I showed her how much I love this Lucas Troy. And it was um, uh, Kirk Dill. Still back. Mm -hmm. yes. Still back. Yeah. The three, so wishes. three wishes. Yep. Uh, three wishes. So I saw that and that price was, I mean, it was stupid good. And it's an 11 by 17 on an acrylic, like heavyweight paper. It's oils. Yeah. It, it looks just like it should be a cover. And I wanted it, but I was trying to like not spend money. And so we talked about it. And then she started looking on there too, while we were in the happy hour pool. And, you know, we saw this, other piece they'll show here in a minute and it's all it's like, also a lucas Trier. yes and i was like i love that one too it's gorgeous like i'm you know i already emailed you know kirk about this 
And I was like, but I don't know if I'm going to do it. And then by the end of our happy hour pool time, I said, okay, I'll do it. And I was going to message him and I emailed him. So then literally like that next day, Kirk messaged me back and he said, I like PayPal him too. And I, he said, Oh, I'm sorry. I already sold it. And he refunded my money. And I was like, okay, that was rude and not what I expected. And I was like, uh, all right, you know, fine. I, I've never had that happen to me before. So it was just, you know, I'm going to roll with it. It's all right. Like maybe it just wasn't meant to be because, you know, so it wasn't I just, meant to be because I sniped it. <laughs> so now Jill can just take over. I, I, we're in the pool and I just, I just paid him right then and there for both this piece and um, other piece wow. that we've got <laughs> coming up soon. And I held on to it for a little while for Casey's birthday. And, you know, this is, this is truly why we're called our collectors in crime because sometimes she'll just offhand say, Oh, I really like this, or I think this is cool. And I'll just swoop in and buy it and surprise her with it. And I think that's it's more, ridiculous. More, I am, I am one of those people that likes to give more than I receive. It's, it's, it is it, one of those. It's true. It was super special. She was going to take it for my birthday, but she gave it to me in October. My dog was through that for a long time. And, I was just, yeah. I felt like I was always so emotional and Jill was just, there's a handful of people, you know, you kind of lean on and Jill's one of those people because during quarantine, we chose to see each other distanced and she gave it to me, you know, one day and she was like, I feel like you needed this before your birthday. Yeah. And just, I was like, ah, and I was like, now I have to message Kurt because now I'm glad I didn't like start bad mouthing <laughs> I was just going to say, you probably were bad mouthing it for a few months, right? <laughs> well, I was like, oh, Kurt, but you know, it's fine. I'm not going to, I'm going to write something and then delete it. I don't know if it's send, you know. Yeah. No, you know Kirk is a, is he's, a, he's a very good guy. He's a good, he's a very yeah. he's a good dealer. I've known him a long time. Yeah. He's very nice. Say, that's that, that's that's cheesy, that classic. The, uh, uh, the art. Oh, oh, go ahead, James. No, you go ahead. I was going to say the art's nice uh, and the stories are nice, but uh, man, I, I kind of like listening to your guys' friendship. It's been, it's been pretty cool. Yeah. She's all right. Yeah. She's okay. She's all right. Well, I keep her around for the gifts. <laughs> I mean, you gotta have something. I mean, yeah, that's right. She also that's has right. given me art gifts. This is not a. This is a two-way relationship, not a one-way. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, James. That um, that that uh, Simone Bianchi piece I got from you. That would have been very cool for you to give to me. You know what I mean? I, I guess I <laughs> I bought it, but you know. Well, the fact that I let it go from my collection was a gift in itself. <laughs> I, 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 knew, I knew it was right up your alley. I'll take it. I'll take it. Do you know what I like about this piece, ladies, is that you know that down at the bottom left there, I like the way the the red in the building kind of fade from his uh signature kind of fades out. That's just like a cool, cool effect. It's like easier said than Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know it really it really, really was, was easier thing. said. He, he's, he's, he lost him. <laughs> yeah, Jason asked. Jason did ask, um, how did you guys meet? I mean, how'd you become friends to begin with? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> our husbands. Yeah. So through our husbands. So. Yeah. They they were friends since um, let me think about this. They met through a mutual friend and then they became mutual friends nerd. on the yeah, mutual nerd friends, and then they became friends on their own. And um her husband's name is Damon. Damon um met Joe through through a friend. My husband is Joe. And then they decided to introduce us, but Damon was with Casey before I was with Joe. And <laughs> Joe, you guys are at his work one day and he tells you guys, oh, I've met this girl, meaning me. <laughs> oh, it's one of my favorite stories, but I also feel like it's not quite as PG. Okay, so we just, a uh, female anatomy, and Joe's just talking to me and he's like dropping the F-bomb and like, I'm down with that. And I like when someone is very just blunt and, and, I don't mind it. And yeah. so he's just literally met me and he's telling me about this blonde who has assets, mm -hmm, sort of assets, assets, tracks of land. And I'm like, I don't know why would I like this guy. And then I met his wife and I was like, I really like her. Well, so. girlfriend at the time, mm -hmm. but yeah. But we, so, so, you know, if I could go back and do it over again, Casey would have been a bridesmaid of mine, but I was a bridesmaid of hers when they got married later. So we, we were actually like personal friends before we really kicked up the comic stuff. Cool. Um, yeah. Are the hubbies into this stuff at all? 
My, well, mine used to be. I mean, so I have, I have, um, old school. Sorry, I'm legendary. Gonna keep, I'm gonna keep doing this. Old legendary <laughs> comics. Um, so it's like those beautiful '80s and '90s comics that I can flip through and look through, and I've claimed as my own and taken to comic cons to like have signed. And he doesn't collect anymore. I totally like took over and started collecting, you know, comic books from the comic shop. Um, even though he brought me to my first comic shop. Shout out to Madness. He used to work at Lone Star Comics um, years ago, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, he's, I mean, he still enjoys it and he still, I always see him looking on his Instagram while he may not be reading comics unless I'm like, Hey, read this one. Um, he's yeah. always like comic stuff on Instagram. So, so for but, me, my husband, we, yeah. we get a sub together still currently. He takes all the bat books, all the star Wars books. Um, he's, he, he has gone to a couple of cons, but it's just, it's not his typical thing. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's turned into more my thing to do with Casey, you know, con wife, as we said earlier. So, um, but he is definitely, uh, super into the comic stuff. He has encyclopedic knowledge of Batman. Of, he has encyclopedic and, knowledge of a ton of stuff. So sometimes whenever he goes off on history, it's like, I enjoy it, but to, let's talk about Batman. Yeah. Like start going off on Batman Joe. Yeah. But we read we read not just Marvel DC. We also take some independent comics and yep. um it very much in the hobby as a comic reader. Gotcha. Cool. Have you ever got them to dress up too? Yeah man. They were court of owls. So uh so <laughs> uh you were Thor, I was Loki and then they both wore suits and then the court of owls Nice. However, cool. speaking of Court of Owls, I totally because what um, what con, was it San Diego Comic Con that um, the Court of Owls masks were passed out during that yep. panel, and then so that was like a hot commodity. And the Court of Owls what was just my favorite new villain mm-hmm. and Batman. Something about them just I loved. So we have been together since two thousand five, Dan and I, but we were engaged for like. I don't want to even say how long because I don't want to play a while. I, I don't want to play in a wedding. So finally it was time. And so we um, <laughs> engagement pictures and I was like, Damon, um, I bought uh, two court of owls masks from a man who was at San Diego comic con. Uh, will you uh, wear them with me? And then one of the pictures. So I got the court of owls mask and put just um, some black sheer ribbon on the eyes because whenever you see those masks, they always like look like this, but on the comics, they're very dark. So I did this beautiful sheer ribbon on there and we're dressed up nice. very nice. Like he's wearing his tuxedo that he ordered and I'm wearing, you know, my dress and we have court of owls pictures. Not all of them. It was like three. Yeah. So not it's a beautiful blue gown. It's the three best wedding photos. Yeah. Yeah. They're my favorite. <laughs> and then my husband has also played uh poison ivy's henchman before right. he carried our nice. junk. <laughs> We were like, can you carry this? <laughs> yeah. Mm. So um, I, I did a cool um, kiss on him and then took a green mm. eyeliner and did like the veins, like the poison veins on his on his face. He was a great sport to do that. Nice. Well, we have a cool. couple questions in the chat. First, uh, speaking of cussing and Harley and Ivy, did you like the animated show? And then uh, is there any of the indie books you guys follow? <laughs> So we love the show. So I started watching the show and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna like stop it and we're gonna rewind and I watched them all with Jill. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was like a Saturday, was, couple of Saturdays, just binge watch, you know, a couple of different cocktails sessions. Cocktails and just laugh. And yeah, that was a that was a beautiful Harley Ivy relationship that happened there and I really enjoyed that. Yeah. And I enjoyed all of the the cussing too so yeah we're not we're and the not violence offended mm-hmm. and the violence mm-hmm. that. <laughs> hi mark we love you um so it, it, and then the other question about the indie comics so i um read walking dead from the beginning we had walking dead number one all the way through the entire series manifest destiny i highly recommend east of yeah. west like that yeah. was a oh, that book that writing and that art it was just perfect so so definitely some of the the other more indie comics i mean elf quest is still an indie comic too i still take elf quest and did the final quest and 
Um, they actually have uh, a, a new um, series that's a little bit more focused on Skywise. So I still read that. Cool. And so there, there's a few that I still, you know, will pick up that's Dark Horse Image, you know, something else. Plus, um, we know some some great artists that do Kickstarter things we still follow as well, like Ryan Kelly with his book, um, you know, Fun Rama. Fun Rama. We'll do like Brent Peoples with his book when it, you know, he's he's on a Kickstarter right now. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for a, a fabulous art or artist, look up um, Brent Peoples and his car Kickstarter. We're both fiends. So that, that's kind of indie because it's all Kickstarter. So all the stuff Ryan Polito is, do, is yeah. doing. Keep Brian Polito mm -hmm. all your money. Mm -hmm. Shout out Smart. Um, so yeah, yeah. I, that, you know, that's, that's cool. the indie stuff that's coming to my mind right now. Cool. One of my uh, buddies, his name is Joel Gomez. He draws a, um, a book for uh, Brian and, and, and Chaos. It's, um, oh, La Muerta? La Muerta. La Muerta, La Muerta. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. He's, he's been doing that for a few years now and re really enjoys it. Yeah, he, he does some beautiful pieces. He I mean, does. Gorgeous. Yeah, yeah he does the, the, ink, the ink wash. Ink wash. It's yeah, mm -hmm. nice stuff yeah. for sure. I was going to say, cool. J James, have, have you have you ever dressed up at the biggest con goer so far? <laughs> but have you ever? But you're a Halloween guy. Oh. Yeah. Oh, well. I mean, th those aren't stories for, for you two, but no, I, I've, never, I've only been to Yeah, but I, I do like to dress up. I'll, there you go, Khalil. Comes to Dallas Con again, because me and Khalil, he was the uh, first person in the hobby that I met in person, and that's because he flew, him and his wife flew to Dallas, uh, and I drove down to Dallas, and we actually did the Dallas Con um, together, so... And a future one, man. Clearly, fly down. We'll hang out with you guys, and uh, yep. uh, I promise to dress up. It won't be drag, Jason. I, I saw you ask many times. Um, <laughs> but we'll see what we can do. Jason, right, Bill, you, my, my wife, she's a big. She, my wife's a big Halloween person. Um, so she makes the family. So I've got two little kids at, at home here, five and two and a half, which makes it tough to keep up with this. Oh, with this stuff, which I like. Most recently, we did the um, Pulp Fiction. So, so I was Jules. My son, he's got he's got the flowy locks like Bill here. He he was Vincent. Uh, my, my yep yep. <laughs> my wife was Uma, and uh, my daughter was the she was a baby. She was the five dollar milkshake. I gotta show a picture, but we um yeah, yeah it was that. it was pretty slick. I have to share that with you guys because that's one that I'm pretty pretty proud of of us doing. Yeah. That's awesome. I've been anyway. on my list with the syringe though in her chest. Like that's what I have on my Halloween list. Oh yeah. Awesome. Yeah. No, she she was when she was dancing with uh with Vincent at mm -hmm. the uh the fifties place. Yep. yep. Yeah. And then so then after that's I, right. The syringe. What Jackrabbit Slims? <laughs> Jackrabbit Slims, that's right. Mm hmm but speaking oh that reminds, speaking of Halloween, so Dan Brereton's stuff too. So he's got some indie indie books that he's doing. So that reminds me, gotta 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 give some love out there to Dan Brereton. Yeah, nice my nice, nice macabre style, right? Fits and perfectly. He's a, a kind human being. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Dan's one of my favorite artists as well. Do you have some pieces from him, Bill? What do you have? I've had. I don't think I have any at the moment, but I, I, uh, I've set one aside. I was over at Mike Berkey's house on Sunday and it was definitely, I, I didn't recognize the character, but it could have been something from Nocturnals, but uh, definitely uh, it was a female commission. And uh, so hopefully that will be mine in the near future because it was nice. pretty okay. awesome. Red or blonde hair? Blonde. Oh, oh. polychrome? Polychrome? Okay, anyway, we can chat about this later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let us know. Yeah. I'll send. I'll send you both a pic. Uh, after yeah. I did, I, you know, not tonight though, because I, I didn't take one. I was gonna. I'm going back there on Saturday or Sunday to check out some other stuff. So, I'll, I'll get oh, one. No, and I'll send it to no. you. We're slacking here. We're, Jason's like, we got we got Dark Phoenix. We haven't shown anything from the Phoenix. Uh, <laughs> we'd have to jump ahead a little bit. Oh. But we could. Well, you know why? You know why what? Not? Why not? Why not? We will jump ahead oh. and uh, even change the order here. Yeah, man, Dan Brereton. Dan Brereton. Because you requested it oh. on demand. Mm -hmm. So I'm a part of. Um, I'm a patron on his Patreon, and I have been for over a year. And he his his Patreon is 
amazing and worth it. And he posts so many insights and beautiful pieces, old pieces, new pieces. Um, so he'll do, uh, if you're on a certain tier on the commission tier, then he'll do this full painted piece. And I just got this in February. Um, every single Phoenix, dark Phoenix I've seen of Dan's in the past. I just knew I had to have it. He loves drawing redheads. So it was just, uh, nice to be able to request something. So whenever it came time, he does sketch plates as well. So I do have a, a, a dark Phoenix sketch plate from him. And, uh, mm -hmm. he said, what, so your options, what do you prefer? You can give him three, like you can give him three. And so he writes me and he goes, so dark Phoenix, dark Phoenix, dark Phoenix. And I'm like, <laughs> all right, there you go. You know? Yeah. So then when it came down for the painted piece, uh, for the annual, I knew I just, I had to have a painted piece while the sketch plate is, absolutely stunning and above and beyond what he's done for some of the other sketch plates. This one, he, he actually messaged me on Facebook and sent this picture before it's a little different now. And he said, what do you think too much pink? And I was like, should I tell the great Dan Barrerton maybe a little too much pink? Yeah. And then I'm adding like some more magenta and dark, but I was like, wow, I just felt really rude even saying anything, but he, it's perfect. I mean, it's perfect. So for me anyway, and it's yeah. flowy hair. That's all I ask for. Give me the flowy hair on any character. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah. And I'm curious to know for, for you guys and maybe for the folks in the chat, to me, this is the best Jean Grey Phoenix costume there's been. You know, there's been a lot of them, mm -hmm. but I think the fact, you know, the, the glisteny kind of arm arm things and the, the, the green versus the red hair, I think that's the perfect the green, costume design. Yes, green always looks good on a redhead. I uh, definitely- yeah, like with <laughs> um, yes, I mean, I love a dark phoenix. I love an unhinged dark phoenix, but I also do, I do love just the phoenix. So I'm a, I'm a black queen phoenix, dark phoenix. Give them all to me. Yeah, you that's can't awesome. go wrong with that. No, and that, that's probably my favorite costume too. That was, uh, uh, I don't know, you can't, you can't go wrong with that one. And the mm -hmm. colors are and perfect. It's always nice whenever the artist says that they enjoy drawing that person. And Dan said, obviously, I really enjoyed this piece. So I feel like he gave it a little extra love. That's but, that's, awesome. but that's another good tip. That's another good tip for people just getting into the, the hobby is to really research the artists you're talking to. And if they really happen to personally love a character, then I'm going to bet you nine times out of 10, they end up putting a little bit more effort into your piece always than they would have other ones. Mm -hmm. And you know when you Very get that true. email back, right? Or you're with them live and they're a little like, you know, shine in, in their eye, their eye kind of yeah. like, oh, yeah. You're, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, it definitely comes out in the work. Yes, mm -hmm. that's the piece you want when they have that reaction. So we're going to go to the next one, but I see a lot of this is, is uh, commissions and our pinups, right, that you see online and we'll pick up. So that's the van you go, right? Because, you know, we, we've had folks on this show who do published, mm -hmm. non published, mixed. But it seems like that's the van you guys go in, right? Well, for, for me, I actually have a few covers and I do have interior mm -hmm. pages. Um, probably about half of my collection is on half bill. Sorry, I'll get on that. But um, <laughs> I, I do collect I do collect a lot of different stuff. It's not only cool. commissions and pinups, but the reason why we shared a lot of those for this particular broadcast is just because those were the best stories. Mm -hmm. Those were those were yeah, lovely. Oh, there you go. Man, she's like, oh, mm, I got hold on, I'm going full screen. Like, this is just, it that makes you sick. Like, take it away. There you go. Uh, it's, oh I mean, it's, it's one of the best costumes in comics ever. Claim with the, one. With the color. <laughs> no, you can't claim that one, Jason. Claim. <laughs> <laughs> so like, calm down, everyone. Obviously, I claim. It's a Nightcrawler, too. But claim. Yeah, that's great. Oh. She'll just cut the top off. Just cut it in half. Keep the Nightcrawler, Bill. <laughs> yeah, right? Bam. Yeah. Do a little. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm sure there are some people that might do that, but the, yeah, no, 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 it's going to stay intact. <laughs> hey, 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 ladies, got a good question from Boy McHale here. He says, where do you see the engagement of young kids and particularly young girls with comics and, and graphic novels? Because in general, it's a little tougher today, but I think it's a little, I don't know if the word is easier, but there's a path for, I guess, young boys a little bit more. So what, what do you think there? So I think that they've done a really good job with some of the, the DC female superheroes in some of the, the comic series that you see. Um, I also don't have kids myself, but I'm an aunt like <laughs> 10 times over plus a great. Yeah. And we're always throwing comic 
stuff at them. Like, yeah. Like yes. yes. We're, we're, we're trying to influence where we can. So, so I think that some of the shows are great. The reboots of the shows mm -hmm. and some of the books that are out there to get them into, to, to try to, to, to do the bridge over to a comic book. But mm -hmm. um, I think there's a lot of really great kid focused um shows now and to get them involved reuben says the dc the superhero DC, girls yes that's what i'm talking about oh the dc yeah. superhero DC girls, girls yeah. yes. yes. that show too it's ridiculous yeah. cute and silly but easy to watch and quick mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. they really do some of the characters justice yeah on who they are yes and now with like disney plus i feel like it's super easy for kids to get into it some is. of the marvel properties that you know, otherwise they just didn't have another outlet to, to see that because it's sitting there right alongside the DC. I mean, sorry, the just the regular Disney um, movies. So mm -hmm. it's, it's real easy for them to pick up and, and see some of those things that they may not have otherwise. And you can How do you steer them away from My Little Pony? I, There's aww. nothing wrong with My Little There's Pony. Nothing There's nope, nothing wrong with a... My Little Pony. Well, but... a big brony. Oh yeah. Teen go. Yes, another great example. <laughs> Teen Titans go. I learned a lot about Teen Titans. I'm not gonna lie on that cartoon. Yeah, because I was not reading it. But I, yeah, definitely, definitely some of the um, young young adult books that they've released. You know, the Black Canary and Catwoman and um, the Wonder Woman. Just the yeah. books in general that you can read without actually having to hold a comic book in your hand can really help. People like me, who I was, I was an avid reader. I would have loved to have had someone given me those, you know, the Batman book. I wish I could remember the name of it, but I, I listened to it on Audible. The Catwoman one, Black Canary, um, the Black Widow one, even that was yeah. never read. Those, those kind of books, I would have loved to have read as a little girl if I had. And then. Um, eventually maybe push my way onto comics because I never had a comic book in my hand when I was young. That is so. my history. I started out with a Wonder Woman book with a cassette that was yeah. my, mm -hmm. you know, gateway to comics later on in life. So okay. yeah, but I think there's definitely and a better path now than there may have been in the eighties and nineties. Right. Right. I think yeah. the cons are big too, right? You take, you take a, there's so much to see there. You take a kid to a con and you don't have to necessarily show them anything look around on their own and they'll see, wow. Or you, you know, stuff will just resonate naturally. Yeah. Right. So yeah, I've been, I've been trying to take my, uh, my uh, nieces, nephews and to, to, to the shows to see what they to see, what they dig on their own. Mm -hmm. I know it's mm -hmm. interesting. I mean, I don't have kids. I don't want kids. I mean, but I love, <laughs> I'm expecting a third <laughs> nephew. nephew. I have a nephew, niece, and nephew. So my oldest, the nephew, he was walking through a department store one time and he grabbed my hand and he said, come here, look, and he pointed out Batman cufflinks. I was like, "How am I not just purchasing these items yeah. right now right for now. him?" Yeah. They explode, right? <laughs> What'd you say? Because they explode. I <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, in the show they do. <gasps> mm -hmm. Um, well, I, know, I have uh, two daughters too, just and so I've got plenty of Powerpuff Girl published artwork and My Little Pony artwork and. My slash our collection here. What 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 do, you, what do your daughters have, though, Bill? What's that? So what do they have? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I got I got a nice one. Oh, I I won't take it off the wall. I, I, so Powerpuff. I mean, but Powerpuff was also one of those random like cartoons that I started watching and I just mm -hmm. fell in love with Sailor Moon. Was just oh, Sailor Moon. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, Bill, again, if you can like make some notes, because I'd like to see some of these pieces. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> there you go. I don't know if this there will you go. Off. There you go. You, you need to update your cap gallery, Bill, with a power yeah, Bill. My no. Nice. I'm going to make this a wide. Oh, there you go. Right on. Yeah. Play him at Jason. Yeah. yeah. No. Sorry, Jason. Let me get this full screen. There we go. Nice. Okay. So, what's, um? you don't have to say your daughter's name if you don't wish to, but what is, her favorite or their favorite of the of the, of the power, power girls. girls. Oh my gosh, I don't know. <gasps> I, no, I've never asked. They're oh. they're well, they're probably a little more My Little Pony than they are well, Power okay. Girls. Okay, we'll we'll forgive you for that. And I, I don't have any My Little Pony art hanging on the wall in my office. No, That's I don't. Crazy. I don't. But there but there is plenty of it hanging around the house though. We appreciate the purple wall though. I love. Yeah. Huh? 
I do. Yeah. I mean, I've already asked my husband, like, can we paint yes. on purple, please? Purple is the color of royalty. As guardian, royal, as guardian royalty. You I'm, not, I'm not putting the helmet on, guys. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Baby you were wearing Baby a, a Wakanda Forever t-shirt the oh, other day, yeah. and it just, oh. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's my Casey, stick. Uh, you, shared, uh, you shared a piece once, I think, within the, the Zoom group. I don't know if this is something that, um, you know, Bill has um, queued up, but it was the Superman lift in the Jeep. I don't know oh, if that's one of the ones. Brent that was Peoples, uh, but he, Brent Peoples is a friend of ours. And he's a so, personal friend. So that is very nice to be able to say. I, I know, you know, you always want to like call someone your friend, but we go to their Christmas parties and he, my husband's um, father passed away a while ago and his, jeep wrangler a yellow jeep um is the last thing that they ever worked on together they were they had an estranged relationship i actually never met the man which is sad but um i when he passed away we saw we went to the hospital and um damon is his only son and we were the ones who had to tell them to take him off of life support so wow. you don't know what to do for someone. I mean, even if it's your husband or your wife, like that's just difficult. So I thought, you know, the only way I can express that is the way that Damon would always talk about how they worked on cars. His father was a master, you know, mechanic and Damon is an incredible mechanic, even though he isn't trained, he's only trained from his father. Um, so there was a Brent Peoples commission that I had and it was, it's Superman lifting up Damon's sheep. And it has, he told me his dad used to always wear gray sweatpants. And there's a man that's just like, kind of like Paul Kent, obviously, but yeah. ambiguous with the gray pants underneath the Jeep working. And it's Superman lifting up and smiling because I love a smiling Superman. And he just says, uh, I've got you, Paul. And it was just, hmm. I thought it was, I thought it was super special and beautiful. And Brent even added to... in his, um, you know, tool red tool case like that he had gotten from his father in the background as a special mm -hmm. edition. It's just a big snap on. Yeah. It's just red a beautiful, tool case. you know, piece that sometimes artists can just latch onto and, and really kind of give you something, something right there to hit you. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's, it's not in the queue of pieces, but, um, yeah, I find a link it, to it. It's one of my it favorites. It's calf gallery? It, it is in my calf gallery there and, you go. and Brent did send me, um, some updates and work in progress. So I was able to post those too. And Carlos says, yes, Brent is running a special commission right now. Um, so Brent Peoples is someone that y'all need to look into because he's, I mean, he's been throwing color on pieces and it's, he's just beautiful, beautiful work Super and, a, talented. and a beautiful human being too. So one of my covers is from him and I don't just buy covers willy nilly. And he's, 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 just, he's just a great guy. Yeah. You want to support him. That's what I always feel like. Yeah. Awesome. Sorry, I was just trying to pull up that image as well. Here it is. Yep, there you go. Oh, look Perfect. at you, Bill. How good are you? Thanks, Bill. That was all James. <laughs> James James is fast on the texting. So we got that there. I very thought you covered, Paul. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was a killer piece. And then so... We, um, Damon and I, I mean, this is obviously whatever, uh, 20, does it say 28, 2018, mm -hmm. pre, uh, way pre COVID. We, um, met up at a, a bar restaurant and sat at a bar and I got to have Brent present it to Damon and we had some drinks and just time to life. And it was yeah. beautiful. It was, it was mm -hmm. a beautiful one of those moments where you just, it's just fun to get a commission like that from someone who really cares and you get to, you know hang out with them a little. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Brent's good oh. people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Thanks great. That up. That's sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bonus. You, you just had some insider knowledge on that one for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. No, thanks for, thanks for sending me the link, James. That was, that was really good. Thank you. You're welcome. We lost Khalil again. We <laughs> did. We did, but he, 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 bow, he bowed out 30 minutes ago. And so, so we, he covered his, his rear end on that exit. But if he comes back in again, I'll, I'll pull him back out. There you go. Gotcha. Well, see. um, I'll go ahead, Bill. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, we can look at some more art, a little bit more art. Sure. Was, 
with a, with, a, with somebody who's always got a sense of humor when they're putting their artwork together. I've oh. known, Frank, known Frank for a very long time. <laughs> so you're seeing some cosplay in action. So these these low jackets, key cosplay. Yeah. yeah, some low key cosplay. I'm not I'm not wearing a, a red wig, but. There was a Frank Cho experience at, at one of Mark Walter's shows, and we decided to fully take advantage and do that. And this is this is definitely one of those examples of your partner in crime, just you know, psh, 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 like, hey, you need to do oh, this. Yeah. And I was like, it, because, yeah, we're gonna do this. But the thing is, is <laughs> I was like, you know, I want to do this. I probably won't do it without you because I'm such a baby like that. But she was like, yeah, I'll do it. And I was like, okay, it could be for my birthday because it was November. It was in 2018. Yeah. And she acquiesced and I never do meet and greets. Oh my gosh. I never do. But man, Mark Walter's show is just amazing. And yeah, that Frank show was very, it was a very intimate. It meet was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so there were probably about um, 25 25 people that got to take part in the Frank Cho experience. And he is just that short. I love that picture because we look like Amazon women. <laughs> Not to Frank Cho. This past <laughs> birthday, he messages me on Facebook and he said, happy birthday, Amazon woman. And it just made me laugh because, oh my God, I look like a freaking giant. Like, no, <laughs> I'm just lucky. I'm outraged. Away from the camera. <laughs> Um, so he was doing remarks on a print. So, so what you see there is the close up on my particular remark, which again, we lucked out a little bit. I don't know how, why, but, um, he hadn't done, he did remarks on all of these prints ahead of time. A lot of Batman, a lot of Batman, but he hadn't done either one of ours yet. So, you know, super lucky for us. We get to talk to him. We get, there were signatures that were part of the deal on some books, which we got, books in, in order to take advantage of that. And then later on, we kind of got to sit in the comic artist uh, green room. We stopped and talked with Jason. So we were like, Jason, hey, Jason Sh Shatner, Shatner, mm -hmm. Shatner. Checker. Shatner. Check. Yeah. Yep. Yes. And he was like, no, he hasn't done your pieces yet. Yeah. And we we're like, can we do a quick request? Yeah. So. Can we maybe request some particular characters? I mean, we but um, just to have a Wonder Woman from him was my, you know, uh, I just, I just love it. And then Casey got to get her own, which you also have that image as well. Yep. There you go. So there you can see the print. There you go. There's the print on the right. And then the hay pudding on the left. And we got, he's, he's actually sitting back in that green room is where that picture yeah. is. And we got to sit and just talk mm -hmm. and talk J about yeah, Jason, like pulled the curtain. He's like, come on back. He's drawing. It. And we're like, Hey, yeah. And we chatted about like cosplay and art and who we've collected and, Got to be very jealous of Jason's collection because I'm sure, as you know, he has an insane amount of Harley and Ivy, and it's disgusting. Yeah. And it just seemed, you know, Frank draw that, and he was just so sweet, and we showed him some Instagram stuff, and he said, well, I'm going to follow you on Instagram. And so he does. It's just, yeah. yeah. No, it was very fun. It was, I know that Frank's an introvert, and I, I actually am also an introvert. I have a lot of trouble speaking with people and doing these kind of things so i know there are different stories about frank um that he can be some sometimes standoffish and the thing is i get it man but it it was just one of those perfect moments and sometimes you just run into that with a with an artist or creator of any sort that you just get them in a perfect moment he was in a good mood it was it was lots of fun it was you know just a per i think it was a perfect setting for him because it wasn't a little smaller it wasn't fan mm -hmm. expo it wasn't line out the door or line around the table it was much more independent and we got to take advantage of that so that's why we wanted to share and we did mm -hmm. yeah and we did mm -hmm. i mean that's probably the only frank cho i'm gonna have i mean i know he's doing big wow art on sundays but it's I like to met, Ooh, randomly met, seconds, like email Steve and be like, "Hey, what are the cover prices of these?" And I just <laughs> be like, "Oh, man, I wish." Yeah, I got to look well, at a few pieces a early. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Frank and I and Steve Morger from Big Wow, we we and uh, Steve Wyatt, we all owned Big Wow uh, Comic Art Fest. Hey. So Frank and I and 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 the Steves, we we got to hang out quite a bit, and those were always like the best times because Frank. Frank's, Frank really is, uh, he's, a, he's very funny and he, he's, a, he's a great guy. And uh, yeah, it was really, for me, it was just a, you know, a unique opportunity to get to hang with all those guys and, and get to know them better. And we had a lot of fun doing that show. It's like one of my biggest regrets is not, not it was it was the hardest thing we ever did or I ever did 
uh, Rob was running a convention, but those guys made it a lot easier. Yeah, and I bet. Then, yep. And it was Frank. Frank is the one that made me um, become one of the owners because he said he wasn't he he wouldn't become a partner if I didn't do it. And and I didn't even know Aww. Frank at that point. But he just felt like because it was going to be an art focused show that you know they wanted to have uh, have me be a part of it. So yeah, you know, Frank's nice. a really cool guy. That's very cool. That is cool. Mm -hmm. It's a great story with something like yeah. that together. I mean, I don't know if you know. I don't know if you know, but I know Frank too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, we're gonna we're gonna try. Uh, I think fourth time's the charm. Oh, Khalil. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I'm what? sorry for interrupting. I, I yeah. just. Uh, so, Bill, you mentioned something about a hard line for the internet into the. Okay, got got it. I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I apologize. Hey, I just, apologize. Just check into your neighbor's Wi-Fi at this point, Khalil. I don't care. <laughs> Go to Starbucks. Stop on, on but, um, Starbucks. <laughs> Tell the kids to stop watching Netflix. Hey. Yeah. In, case, uh, yeah. in case we lose yeah. them again, I guess we'll do a quick intermission, Bill, if that's okay. I'm um, Yeah, I think I'll be okay. I'm a little closer to the actual Wi-Fi hub well, so in the house, so we'll see. I think I'm all right. Well, All right. no, what I was saying is what we we're going to do just, just for those is we we're going to do a exhibition one round. It's not amateur <laughs> dueling dealers. It's peewee league dueling dealers with me and Julio for one piece <laughs> each. Cause we were both about okay. to sell a piece on calf tomorrow. We figured you know, those people are watching toward the end. We'll give them, give them a shot for one. Yeah. That we're each selling. Yeah. So. All uh, right. So I'll pull the, I, I've got, cool. I have Khalil's uh, image queued up first, if that's all right. Yeah, Bill, that probably makes sense because I'll drop off in a, in a minute, right? So. <laughs> no, well, I'll, all right. <laughs> hey, if, if Khalil drops, it's an auto claim. There you go. So so you guys know I collect a lot of Stegman, but with some recent pickups, I've been trying to go through the collection to see whether or not, you know, there are some pieces I could. Oh. 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 I don't. Uh, he's going to. Uh, the Stegman cover up for sale. I think he was going to ask for 18. Oh, <laughs> did I ruin it? Well, he's not no. <laughs> Poor Khalil. Th this is a meme in and of itself right here. <laughs> a frozen face. You, you got to capture the picture and use it later. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. All right. Let's see if we can get him back. Well, we'll see. Um, let me pull up the other image though, because this one's not wanting to let me uh, switch on to the other piece. Don't know why, so I'll pull it up a different way. Larry says claim for two hundred. Larry's trying to help you out. <laughs> hey, Khalil, if you want to take Larry's offer, don't say anything. <laughs> Going, like once. A Going twice. Going <laughs> twice. Yep. And here, I'll, I'll let me get the other one up here. So you were right when you said Pee Wee, though. Unfortunately. Yeah, Pee Wee League. Pee Wee League. There we go. It was worth. It was worth. <laughs> um, so this is uh, Bagley uh, ASM uh, four fifteen page twenty two, half splash busting out of a central space, and I'm gonna put it up tomorrow. But giving you guys a preview for twenty five hundred bucks. There you I mean, have it. Really a nice half splash, dude. So there. That's awesome. And it'll be in your calf classifieds tomorrow. Yes, sir. So you can zoom in a little bit more on that one. Yeah, very cool. Bill takes no cut of it. No, I do not. <laughs> I'd like to take a cut. How do I arrange that? <laughs> I'll, 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 right. What panel do you want? I'll snip it out. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, there you have it. The, the, the anyway, Pee Wee version is going to be up. I've got. I, I don't think. Uh, Let me see here. I was gonna say, I Jill. Have, I, I don't think you guys have internet problems, but uh, looks like Casey dropped off. She no. She only went to take a restroom break because you said intermission. Ah, uh, see. So we oh, were gonna. So we were gonna trade um, off. I mean, I don't know. If, I don't know if you've noticed, yeah. but there's there's been a little bit of a beverage happening <laughs> over here. So since. Well. Since you guys took an intermission, she took an intermission, and I will then sue. <laughs> See? Uh oh. And and I'll just say this: you since you you uh, you had the Bagley piece up, that um, I have a stack of Thunderbolts pages that I uh, borrowed from Berkey because there were a couple of collectors that had asked me 
about Thunderbolts art. And I've got like 60 pages from issues, uh, I don't even know, 17 to 22 or so. So if anybody's interested, I can always send them pics. And uh, last time I was at uh, Berkey's house, I actually found a stack just as big as that one with stuff between issues uh, two and 10. So there was a lot of early and stuff, that's a, surprisingly. And that's a good segue. And Bill mentioned in the beginning of the show um, that we're going to look to do something a little, you know, on maybe possibly a new show on a Sunday. So the thought process is, and, and what's nice is a lot of the people in, in the chat uh, if you'd like to be part of it, you're, you're more than welcome to. So we're going to do something that's more panel based, like the view or something. So the thought process, there's going to be five of us or four with Bill, uh, you know, newer collector, intermediate collector, more of a con sketch collector and an older collector. And the week leading up to the show, we're going to poll the art community on topics that you'd want discussed, uh, trending topics. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know, Bill was mentioning simple things like he gets asked questions on, you know, not just how to meet artists and all that, but how to frame pieces or how to how to ship and acquire. But you know, we'll we'll pick the top three or four topics, and then what we'll do is um, we'll have a time limit, and the panel will discuss the topics. And that way, we can try to get some relevance, revel, relevant stuff. I'm butchering that word, or different perspectives from a bunch of collectors on topics that are trending. Um, also, to kind of you know draw on the crowd and make it a little bit interesting, you know, Bill was mentioning he found 60 Thunderbolts pages. Apparently, Mike's got these bins that he hasn't opened in years, full of a ton of random art that he hasn't posted. So, as an added bonus, we're going to bust open a bin every time and just randomly pull pages. You can't buy them on the show. We're not going to discuss pricing on the show, but you'd be surprised what random stuff gets pulled out of these bins that hadn't seen in six to eight years. That if it's you're interested in it, you know you can you know hit up Mike on the back end. So uh, the thought process is you know the panel of five. We'll try to keep some consistency, but for anyone that wants to try to be in that paneling group, you know talk to Bill, talk to myself or Khalil, and we'll get you on, and you guys get to share the perspectives from um, you know modern topics in the hobby. So yep. we'll see how it goes. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. I think I, there's there's a never ending amount of things that we can talk about. That's for sure. And, uh, and as far as the art goes with Berkey, there's never ending amounts of art to look at from, from his place as well. So, all right. So the Pee Wee amateur dueling dealers, was a you know, failure. It, it was a failure. <laughs> and Khalil's asleep. There's Khalil's, another name. <laughs> I, I got it. Now I'm taking a, I'm doing a print screen right now. Yes. Yeah. That's going up on <laughs> dueling dealers tomorrow. <laughs> uh, Everybody's saying the screen graph. <laughs> Yes. That's all. all right. Well, well, intermission over. Yes. I'm going to turn Khalil off. So, we, so everybody got their screenshots? <laughs> no, I'd say leave them on. Leave them on. Uh, he is so bored tonight. Oh, he dropped off. Oh, so. <laughs> he did. Oh, yeah. man. I, I feel bad for him. It, this, it, this has happened before on some of our live streams where we have a guest that just can't keep their connection. I mean, what are you going to do, right? It happens. Uh, make fun of them and make them feel really bad. Take screenshots of their frozen faces and then. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Nope. Can you kick Leo off calf because of that? Uh, no, I wouldn't do that. Okay. <laughs> I could scare him for a little while, though. <laughs> there are settings that I can actually make it where it looks like you can't get to calf. So, um, Bill's got I just, power. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've had a few, you know, it hasn't been, it's been a very long time uh, ago, but I, there was a few instances where people were just really belligerent. And I was like, you know, as long as they stay logged into CAF, I can make their life miserable by not thinking they can't get to CAF. And so they'd be logged in, they go to CAF, and they'd get something completely different. And uh, and yeah, they everybody cleans up, cleaned up their act really quick after getting, uh, you know, uh, blacklisted like that for a little while. So, anyway. Bill, we love the benevolent power you wield. <laughs> Ah, uh, thank, like, thank you. Almost like a, a hammer. Like a hammer. That's like right. That, that's right. Mythical, all powerful. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> the band hammer, but it's uh, you know, it's it, it the, a little <laughs> funny. I've I've got little tricks like that up my sleeve with Cap for some you know when things go wrong, like you know making it so people can't send email, make people think they are sending email when they're not because they won't listen. Uh, we've got things that are set up so that people have email limits when they're new. So it keeps people from spamming everybody on the site. So 
Yeah. So and when I'm having issues on calf, that's just you effing with me. <laughs> it could. It could very well be. It could very well be. <laughs> we like won't do that. Too. I always appreciated calf because when I signed up, I think in 2011, and I had my name on there, and I didn't want my real name on there, and I messaged like what I was thinking was just like a help message. Mm. And I said, how do I change my name? And it was you, Bill Cox, that <laughs> emails me back and tells me how to change that. It, that was the thing of beauty. Like, yeah, you know, I am still in charge of all customer support on Comic Art Vans. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of these days, I'd, I'd love to have somebody take that over. But, mm. you know, it's just, uh, it's part of the whole thing. I always felt like, you know, CAF is really uh, my baby. And, and at the end of the day, it's kind of like, it's a it's an open forum for everybody, but at the same time, it's sort of like my party. So that's why I put all those trappings in there. That if somebody was being unruly, that's how I kick you out of the party. Yeah. So, that's you know, and it's yeah, it, it just makes sense. I want people to have a good time when they're on calf, and and that's you know, I, I don't have to, I, I have no tolerance for for people who don't want to enjoy it like I want it to be enjoyed. So yeah, you know. and no one wants a party pooper. That's right. That's exactly right. Yes. So. Uh, uh, let's look at some more art because we're getting close to two hours and not that I set a limit on any, on Sorry, anything, yeah. but, but I'd like to get through the artwork that we've got, uh, set up here for you. If you don't sure. mind, let's see. Here. No, we don't. We like talking about art. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh -huh. So this is, this one's mine. This is, uh, Dijana Granoff and, uh, she is, um, I, I saw one of the earlier questions about fe favorite female artists. Dijana would definitely be in my top five for one of my favorite female artists. So she, uh, this is in oils and she had this as her cover picture for quite a while on Facebook and being an Ivy fan and a fan of her work, uh, I went ahead and acquired about, about this piece and got it. And before, right before I got it, Casey oh. had talked to her. Yeah. <laughs> before she got it, I was like, yo, how much is this piece? <laughs> and she always intended it to be a companion piece to a Harley that Casey now has. So this is another example of like, hey, your your comic art collecting partner in crime, Casey, giving you the heads up. So um, she also does a claim event every July. July, right? June, Did July. It, I think it was. It's July. I think July. Right. I think it's July. And it's like. It, it, I got to tell you that this gave us life during quarantine and July of 2020. Just there was an art drop every single day. Full time happy Full hour. Full time happy hour claim. Like you've got to be the first one to claim pieces. And this particular one wasn't, was not an example of the, the full time claiming, but um, I've got a good three pieces, other pieces from her that are, that are examples of that. So Dijana is just definitely, definitely, a fabulous artist in her own right it, and related to Adi, Ruben, yes. Ru, it's the, uh, Ruben, that's her, um, Addie's, uh, sister. sister. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, all in the family connection. So I love this piece and I also love it even more that Casey has the companion to it, which is the, the Harley that she did. She doesn't love oils. So it's, it's kind of a, a diamond in the rough to have an oil piece mm -hmm. from, from Dijana. <laughs> Yes. There you go. There's the companion piece. And that one was summer 2020. So that was definitely a whole happy hour chat. That was like, should I, shouldn't I? We talked about doing this and she said that she would like to have them still together. Yeah. So yeah, she calls it a mostly oil painting <laughs> and it's a, a nine by 12 on the, on the hot press. So yeah, I love it. I love it. I, it's very different from any Hartley I have. So I also love a Harley with long hair. I adore short hair, but I do absolutely love this piece mm -hmm. since it's completely different than anything. Yeah. So she ended up doing this one at least a year and a half to two years after the, after Ivy. the Ivy. Mm -hmm. And I was mm -hmm. like, you don't get this piece. This is one of those that I would just buy for you. I mean, they need to be together mm -hmm. period. So, well, I mean, different households, mm -hmm. but <laughs> pretty much as, as close together as you could get. And that was the the last set of the, your collaborative uh, art purchasing that you sent me too. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. So so yeah, there are there are a few good things that came out of COVID. All these wonderful opportunities that we've all gotten 
to buy art direct from the artists because they've had to look to you know unique ways to market themselves and get you know get art sales so uh for as bad as it's been it's it has been a very interesting and creative marketing time for all of us so i mean we wouldn't be doing this tonight if it wasn't frozen that's what i keep thinking yeah that's amazing yeah. yes and it is amazing we're i mean we're certainly lucky out um that that, that it's the case yeah. we'll take it we like talking sure. to you guys <laughs> there you go i wouldn't have met james I my take doing this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. james is uh, all right i'll bring out the negative <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh oh, the unique pieces here's uh an adam hughes okay so this one's mine so um adam hair, hughes hair is just, toss. Hair I, toss. I don't know if you know but adam hughes is, is most definitely for anybody that likes female pinups female art you know i mean come on he's he's kind of the the artist artist on a for for female figures and this one I got um, through Mark Hay. Shout out, shout out to Mark Hay over at, at Splash Page. He's he's also, you know, a, a, a dealer that Casey and I are close to, and um, just a lovely person. And Comic Asylum. Comics Asylum mm -hmm. is is his store in Richardson, and it's just, you know, always great working with him. And he had this piece, and and he took a step out of his, I feel like normalcy of anyone before COVID, obviously when we would have our North Texas comic art meetups and he yeah. just comes and he, he doesn't really know a soul. And that's hard. I feel like for most people, some people can yeah. really thrive on that, but it was just beautiful. Come and hang out with us. Yeah. Jason Coates, much yes. love to Mark Hay. Jason Coates also has a great, yeah. Amazing pieces. Anyway. Go yeah. Ahead. Mark Hay reps uh, Richard Ortiz and both, Jason and I have have pieces from from Mark that are Richard Ortiz and they're fabulous. And but but this piece I wanted to include it in in this particular conversation because this piece is still the single the, the single piece <laughs> that's the most expensive uh, for me in my collection. I've spent more on other on other uh, forays, but um, it was like a, a complete comic story that I bought. Um, it was a Dan Pinocean that's that's more expensive than this. And so I got this in, in um, January of 2020. And um, this kind of marked sort of a turning point for me in collecting that I started to play in pieces that were four figures and not just, you know, three figures and two figures. But I love it. This is um, it, it's been told to me that that it was, um, you know, a part of a DVD a Wonder Woman DVD insert. So this is a, a published piece as far as a, a DVD is concerned. But I love it. This is uh, my second most viewed piece on on Cap for good reason. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I do remember that piece. I'm, I'm good friends with Mark. I, I would always help him in his booth at San Diego. And and Mark actually ended up becoming one of the owners of Big Wow. I think he was only an owner for maybe a year and a half until, you know, right up until he sold it. But here I actually have my, my one of my Adam Hughes. I only have two. But Oh, side. nice. Uh, sorry, it's a lot, which, okay. a lot of glare. There we go. All right. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. But I got that for doing his website. So. Oh, that was, nice. That was my compensation. <laughs> yeah, no, it's actually, yeah. I, I got a lot of my art early on by doing the dealer art, art sites that I've done. So, you know, doing Mark's site and everybody, Albert, Romita Man. I mean, I've, I've done Ruben's website. So a lot yeah. of things were done for trade early on. And, that was how I got my start. Yeah, that is awesome. Mm -hmm. Especially if you get paid in fabulous art, always. Yes, without question. <laughs> I'd rather have art over cash these days, right? It's yeah. as good as cash, right? It is. <laughs> yes. Now, now here's a good one. I like. Oh, that. that's a good yeah. story. Gosh. So this was October 2020, and this was um, dumb luck. You that's, got lucky. That's all it was. You're welcome. Was actually, stupid dumb luck. So usually um, the original drink and draw social club, Dan mm -hmm. Pinochian, Jeff Johnson, Dave Johnson, and then their other co-host, you know, Joe Quesada. So they were doing a giveaway, a trivia question kind of giveaway. And I haven't seen them do one since, but Jill and I actually, they usually do it Thursdays. Jill and I try to do a happy hour on Fridays at home. And um, we were going to watch it. 
And so we were watching it, having some cocktails, and then they started the trivia question. And we, like, she has, you know, her phone or computer out, and I have my computer out. And they ask the question. And I'm not going to lie, I didn't know this question off the top of my head. Who could Google the fastest man? <laughs> uh, fastest fingers right here. I can always, like, if you see something found on the internet, I'm going to find it for you. Uh, so it was, what did the organization hate stand for in Marvel's next wave? So I just happened to be the quickest and it was highest anti-terrorism effort. And I just typed that in real fast. So, Oh, congratulations. Colin. Hey, Colin. I'm going to have to hear what you got. Um, so Joe was drawing and Joe is like kind of notorious on that show to kind of not show you what he's drawing for the longest time. Well, the point was none of them showed what they were drawing and none of them were actually at that point. Mm -mm. Right. So, I really kind of wanted something from one of the Johnsons and it's like, mm. and Jill like looks at me and she's like, Casey, Joe. And I'm like, you're right. Why would I not? You're going to turn Joe? down a Joe Q. So I was like, Joe, and he was the only one drawing a female superhero. And oh my God, it was Wanda. And to get a Joe Q inked piece is it's rare. It's pretty rare. So I'll count my lucky stars for that. Um, also Joe and I connected on Facebook and he's like, Oh, Hey, you know, I'm going to send this to you. I'm like, great. And he said, I think I'll send it. Cause it's on a post. It's the back has the, the social, like the drink and draw social and you can literally pop a stamp on it and mail it. And I was like, yeah, Joe, no, <laughs> uh, believe me, I will pay extra. I know you're giving me a free piece, but I will be happy to pay extra for um shipping yeah so thankfully his wife helped him pack it and it was like cardboardish piece in an envelope wrapped up and stamped and then mailed to me but to think that joe q was just gonna send me this piece like willy-nilly in the mail with nothing around it with a stamp it kind of broke my heart and i just thought i can't let that happen <laughs> this is in my top five pieces in her collection i would steal I mean, easy. <laughs> well, when I die, it can go to you. Okay. <laughs> no, that's a great one. Absolutely. And I, I don't watch the drink and draw often enough, but uh, I've seen seen several. But yeah, yeah that's that's fabulous. Congratulations. They're, thank you. And they're much uh, shorter than this show. Yeah. And they're, um, <laughs> you know, and I mean, they're an hour. So it's kind of like one of those where you can like pop in if you don't like what you see. You know just leave but right. well they're always like the length of our show we do more drinking so it, it balances out there's that's more drinking true. than drawing on the show yeah, yeah. that's true <laughs> but yeah i love that story it's a great piece it was, a, yeah that's another example of a covid giving you an opportunity you would have mm -hmm. not otherwise received yeah very true yeah all uh, right here we had spoken about this series earlier ah uh, this one's mine. So, so shout out to, to you, Bill, and to just even having calf in general. So, you know, ElfQuest is a big part of my origin story and getting into comics in the first place. And so ElfQuest was the first true series I read in, in trade and um, love the story, love the characters. Lita is one of my, you know, personal favorites along with Nightfall. And so I actually started messaging, not spamming, but, you know, a, a couple of the people that had Wendy Peeney pieces, you know, obviously this has Rick, um, a, a dedication on it. And so I just reached out to him and he was, you know, perfectly nice and kind and responded back to me. And I ended up making a great deal on this piece as well as another piece that he had in his collection because uh, it was super complimentary that he said, you know, you seem to really love Elf Quest as a series and really love her art. So he offered me another piece at the same time as this one. So um, Wendy Penny has um, some carpal tunnels, so she doesn't tend to do uh, sketches any longer at cons. Mm -hmm. So, and, and some of the prices that ElfQuest has been, you know, reaching here recently on some of the, the auction sites has just been fabulous. I, you know, I love that for them, that the ElfQuest art is appreciating, but this one holds a special place in my heart always. And it's an 11 by 17. So, so it, she's recently been doing some smaller pieces. And um, I just love that this one is big and beautiful and bold. And it's kind of in her, 
uh, you know, traditional outfit as um, as a Sunfolk person where she she tends to go into, thank you, Jason, where she tends to go more into some Wolf Rider clothes a little bit later on. But I love this particular piece for that reason. Um, so that's kind of, this is, this is one of the ones that just pulls at your heartstrings. It'll always be in my collection. This will probably be one of the, the bottom 10 that gets sold out of my collection. If I'm ever forced to sell anything, I just, I love that one. Well, I don't blame you. Uh, Richard and, and Wendy actually have a gallery. Yeah. I've emailed with Richard uh, a few times. So. Yes. Yeah. They're, they're lovely. Uh, and fabulous. They, um, and the other reason why I needed this piece and ended up getting it from somebody on calf is because they don't tend to come down to Texas. So, um, so I just took advantage of the opportunity to contact somebody that had something from them. That's true. So Alfredo, that is definitely true. So the reason that I have a sketch and the reason why I have some of the color guides is because Yes, they, they definitely donated all of their original pencils and inks uh, to a school. So those just, they're quite frankly, just not in the market at all. So I have four pages of the color, the donning color guides, and uh, I treasure them like their original art because that's as close as you're going to get mm -hmm. uh, on a, on a peeny piece to original art is, is some of the color guides. I've, I've read the same thing and I, and it's true. You don't see hardly any of their work on the market. It's very yeah. rare. Yes. Yeah. All right. This is uh, one of Casey's pieces. Oh man. I'd also steal this one. <laughs> oh. Go ahead, girl. oh man. Some good old Jan. She, wow. I mean, wow. I know she's m more known for star Wars, but I actually acquired this piece from Anthony's and then after I bought it, so this was this past summer, it, I found out that, so she drew it for October in 2019 and then I messaged her. I thought, you know what? I'm just going to like shoot a, you know, shoot a message to her, a kind of a, I'm, I'm chick. I don't know. Maybe she'll answer me. Maybe she'll like accept my friend request. I try not to, friend requests random strangers but you know ultimately she kind of was so she accepted and then we were talking about it and she said she just drew it because big bard is one of her favorite characters and she actually included it in one of her sketchbooks and for some reason i cannot find that sketchbook i do not know why so i don't know what sketchbook it was but um she also was so sweet to tell me that um uh, john ostrander and and she did a um Big Barda versus uh, Demon uh, comic book, and it just was never published uh, by you know DC, and it just that sometimes happens. Sure. Whenever uh, creators and artists have a book, and then it just kind of pushed to the side. So anyway, it was just kind of sweet that she just said that that was one of her favorite characters, and she wanted to draw that, and that she and John created a comic, you know, versus, you know, Etchka and the Demon, and it was, was never published. So this was, this is probably one of my most stunning pieces. I have some gorgeous, like, full-color pieces, but something about just a black and white just, mm -hmm. it just it hits different. The background is stunning. I, you know, we we love the big Barda version. That's not the huge helmet because it just lets the person mm. of Big Barda shine through. And I think that's just a perfect example of that. I completely agree. Yeah, yeah, man, I love the biceps. Uh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, the the musculature. What's the George <laughs> case? The musculature on that particular piece is yes. fabulous. Had to pull that comment on the screen. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's a Wonder Woman piece. Oh yeah. So this actually has uh, the most views for me um, for my calf gallery. So I mean, Ramona Freyden is just killing it. Um, I mean, she's like 94 years old. She is still creating art. I am on her wait list right now with Catskill Comics and. This particular piece I got um, in a lot from someone that was selling a good, there's probably about eight Ramona Freighton pieces I have, and I bought the entire lot for this one. 
<laughs> <laughs> and uh, because because it's you know number one it's number woman okay. wonder woman number but two it was a steal of a lot it was two yeah it was a steal of a lot and it, you know number two it was um a wonder woman who you know number one love ramona number two it's a wonder woman number three it's she's this is a homage to Norman Rockwell's Rosie the Riveter. Yeah, you're right, Emil. She doesn't do color anymore. So this it's kind of a diamond in the rough. She and pops on occasionally and does a color, but it's like a hit or miss. It is a hit or miss. That. I think it's a, if she wants to do it, if she's connected to a piece or not. But the Norman Rockwell version of this piece is a Rosie the Riveter in blue coveralls, having a lunch break with the rivet gun that's a rivet gun across her lap for for those of you guys that are <laughs> what is that on her lap that's a rivet, a gun. rivet gun i feel like people always ask that yeah and yeah rosie the riveter um the actual piece it's in arkansas is in crystal bridges and there is no way around it as you walk around that corner go to crystal bridges if you're in arkansas Oh my goodness, it is larger. It's huge. It is larger than life and it's yeah. stunning. Yeah. So then Jill to have this piece, it's like, ugh. I yeah. feel like I need a supergirl Rosie the Riveter now. Well, we we've <laughs> talked about her getting a companion piece at some point that's a supergirl, also with a rivet gun, maybe eating a piece of pizza. pizza my favorite. <laughs> that, my you need a dark friend. phoenix. Uh, Rosie the Riveter, but she's just going to town and destroying some buildings with it. It's already like shooting <laughs> off, you know, no big deal. So I've already, I've already, um, I'm on R Ramona's list with Catskill and my request is, you know, I do want another Wonder Woman just because this particular piece I bought um, in the secondary market. So I want one from Ramona that was done for me and I've requested like, hey, I've seen all of your pieces that are fabulous with uh, y you know, uh, your feelings towards uh, Trump, not to get super political, but I happen to agree with her on her, her feelings uh, being anti-Trump. And I, I just, my request was, I would like a Wonder Woman. I would like her to just be expressing how that, um, that Trump is no longer the president. So we'll see what she comes up with. I've been on her list since November. Uh, we'll see when when my my spot in line comes up, but I just love this piece, and you know also won't get rid of it easily because of just what it represents with the the feminism, the female empowerment, the homage to Norman Rockwell. Mm -hmm. I know I loved uh, her pieces with the magic lasso and you know yeah. getting Trump to tell the truth and that kind of thing. Now those were those are really really fun pieces and and and. She can do no wrongs, you know, to this day, her artwork is so beautiful. And it is, it is. She is a legend. She is a true, no matter what era she was working in, she's she's a true legend. Yes. <laughs> uh, Jason hasn't commented in a while, but uh, let's pull up a X-Men related piece now. Oh, yeah. So I know not everyone loves Grant Gland. However, as I was frequenting my comic shop as a new, you know, comic buyer, I started picking up um, Phoenix, the, um, the end song. And um, it was in trade paperback. And I just kind of thought the art was very different for me then because I was very new and I thought it was beautiful and I fell in love with it. And of course, I already liked Jean from even just the, um, the animated series and the, Jean wasn't in comics. She just wasn't in no comic books unless she was coming back as Dark Phoenix or something in the White Hot Room or in Wolverine's Dream or something like that. And it was just, I don't know, I enjoyed it and the art and it was just gorgeous. So Greg Land obviously did this and <laughs> Greg Land was coming to the Fan Expo and that was spring 2018. And um, I messaged him and it was a nice price uh, for 250 I'll just say. And basically, uh, he was doing kind of lesser pieces for that amount. But I, um, there was a Magneto cover. It was um, an Uncanny X-Men number 12. And Magneto was in a white outfit with his helmet. And he's 
holding a drink and it, it looks like a hellfire throne. Um, like, so it's just like he's in the hellfire club and it's just a chair, but, um, it looked thrown like, so I messaged Greg and say, Hey, I love your work. I would love to get a piece. What, what, what are your prices? I'll see you in Dallas. And he told them to me and I messaged him back and kind of just had like this vision. And so my vision was that with, um, Jean holding a glass of wine or champagne with a mischievous look. And obviously the hellfire club is, uh, the reason she has then like become dark Phoenix. I mean, they, they truly helped push her to be dark Phoenix. So I wanted her in her dark Phoenix outfit on uh, the throne and just holding some wine and being yeah. mischievous. And it was just that homage to that uncanny X-Men cover. And he said, I love it. And I'm like, great. Like, so how much extra is this? And he's like, I'll see you at the show. And it was no extra. And it was just, I got to see the pencils and he said, should I show you? And I'm like, yeah. And so we did. And then I got to see him ink some of it. And I just thought Greg Lamb was just a very precious person. And his wife was precious too. They were just, they were pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. So we got to see him at a different show as well. Yeah. And they were, they were very kind. Very cool. I've never got to, gotten to meet Greg. You haven't? Uh, or you no, I have, not, I have not. Oh, he, I mean, so sweet wine lovers. So we have so to it's appreciate perfect to ask that. them to put a wine glass in her hand, you know? Yeah. So I, I, um, I was pretty blown away by the piece and I just loved how much love he put into that. And, you know, it was kind of nice because that literally was one of the first comics other than I saw Frank Cho pieces were some of my first pieces that I ever saw at comic shops that really kind of hit me and I fell in love with. Um, and then, um, Gail Simone's Birds of Prey. Those that was my that was, those right. were my books that I were I was buying and it was um that X Men in song. So I count my lucky stars for being able to get that. Mm -hmm. Heck yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's, uh, oh, this is a little different. Another female character. Oh, big surprise! Another female character. <laughs> Another woman. So, so I, I did want to, this is the perfect piece for this conversation with bringing up the point that you can still be an art collector and not spend, you know, four or five figures on art. So the reason why this piece is super special to me is that this was a piece that Casey and another friend of ours, Mike Alderman, went in on. This is a Perez from March of 2019. So it's, it's one went in his kind of retirement tour. And they, uh, you know, Mike, through his connections, was just able to get someone, uh, uh, David Hong is his name, so shout out to David Hong, was able to get this piece for me, for me at a Hawaii con. I live in Texas. Mike is in Texas. <laughs> well, Louisiana comes to Texas um, occasionally, and then Casey is in Texas. So this is a perfect example about how the comic art collecting community can be, just be so nice and just helping each other out. And um, Perez has been, <laughs> yes, Jason Perez has been retiring for four years now. So this is, this is my first Perez piece. Um, oh, <laughs> and um, my most recent one is, is still kind of on his retirement tour, but as a Wonder Woman lover, Wonder Woman fan, Wonder Woman reader, I'm always going to want a George Perez. Let's face it. Like he is just, one of the artists that just will always hit that place in my heart for his his run on Wonder Woman and how he draws her because when you see a George Perez Wonder Woman you know you know without seeing the signature that it's a George Perez so um, I just wanted to um, include this this particular piece for my collection because of how much it means to me personally. Like I ugly cried when I got this piece from from Mike. <laughs> I still ugly cry now. Just thinking about like how thoughtful it was for these people to reach out to this person all the way in Hawaii and get a piece for me from George Perez, who by uh, you know ninety nine percent of accounts is one of the nicest creators in, in all of comic art. So I will always um, spring at a George Perez piece when I have the opportunity because he just means so much to me as a creator. We've talked a lot about George on, on this channel and, and he is everyone's you know favorite creator. That's yeah. for sure. He's got the nicest personality. He's so, I mean, 
I'll say it. He's he's the sweetest guy I've ever met. You yeah. know, it's 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 one hundred percent true. You know, he, yeah. He's he's such a pleasure to be around, and he he really appreciates the fans like no other creator I've ever met. Yeah. So. He is he is just a fantastic person. So anything I can do to support his art, I will. I mean, I I know that he's had some some health issues and and being a di diabetic that have caused him to maybe not um, churn out the same level of work that he has in, in previous years. Mm -hmm. But you know what? You know, Van Gogh had all of his periods too, his blue blue period and his depressed period and his super you know vibrant yellow periods and just. I feel the same way about George. No, well, I agree. I agree. Yeah. All right. We have actually one piece from each of you left here. Okay. So I'm going to jump over to this one. Oh. Oh, man. No, oh, John Lucas. Man, he is so great. Oh, Lord. That's a giant piece. What size? I wish I could remember. It's not it's not quite 18 by 24, but, but I think it's like an 18 by 20. I, I mean, mean, it's big. It's big. And so this was uh, September 2017. Again, it was Mark Walters show. Thank you, Mark Walters. I saw John Lucas on the sketchbook prices or the sketch prices group. And I fell in love with the stuff. And then I saw he was coming into Dallas and I reached out to him and I was like, Hey, you know, what are some of your commission prices? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. Granted, this is 2017, and I'm sure he's charging more because I have gotten a couple of other pieces for gifts as well um, from him. But he's got to be charging more than $60 for this piece that is giant. So Jill and I walk in. We run to his table, get it. And I look at Jill, and I was like, we got to go. We got to go to back to my car. <laughs> we we got to put this in my car before he changes his mind and keeps this piece. It is still probably one of my favorite pieces. It's the wallpaper on my work computer. And uh, John Lucas is just, he's just a great person. Yeah. And he's so sweet. And wow. So we were kind of flipping through some of his prelims on his um, table, you know, just pieces of paper with sketches. And there's like, four, three or four pieces of my piece that he's like sketched out in prelim. And he's like, ah, you can just have them. And I'm like, mm -hmm. like through, you know, through $10 at him. I know it's like, maybe not a lot, but just him trying to give me those prelims. And I was already getting that piece for $60. Yeah. I felt like it was stealing it, but um, we've definitely used him. Like Jill said in our um, Nortex comic group mm -hmm. and uh, given each other gifts from him and, he yeah. is just, he is insanely talented. What was so funny is that when we were talking to Frank Cho and he, one of his questions was, well, you know, who do you have pieces from? Like, who do you collect art from? And so we start listing out artists. And I remember saying John Lucas and Frank Cho was like, oh yeah, that guy's talented. And we're like, yeah, that guy's, that guy's super really talented. Like, and we, I feel like I steal it from him every single time I get a, a piece from John. He's, he's a sweetheart. Yeah. He's an amazing person. So believe me, y'all look up John Lucas. Bart, and it's not going to be a lot of money, even though it should be more. And this is just whew, the caliber of work. It's stunning. No, that's great. That is really nice. And I got one more here. I think I'm, maybe I might've saved one of the better ones for last. I don't know. It's very colorful. For all oh, great, Bill. Oh, they have on. all been great. Well, they have. So, so this is my this Lucas Priya. So, yeah. the Catwoman. Uh, whew, we probably talked about her Catwoman maybe an hour ago. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but so this is this is the if you recall this is the having happy hours in the pool, talking to each other, just trying to get through COVID, trying to get through the pandemic, trying to feel a little bit of normalcy. And then Kirk Delbeck had this on sale um, at Three Wishes and he had recently reduced the, can you believe he recently had reduced the price on this one. So this is Lucas Troya. Um, it, it's a 13 by 19. It's oils. Wow. It's a fabulous on your screen and in person. And so Case and I were talking about this piece 
as well as uh, the cat woman that I ended up sniping from her. So I just sat in that pool one day and decided to get both pieces and, and paid him for both all at one fell swoop. Kirk and almost got his bad review. <laughs> Kirk almost got his bad review for Casey. But, um, but the other uh, hilarious thing about, you know, Casey's, Casey's piece, her, her cat woman and mine, this poison ivy, is that this is the the primary example that I had um, and still have of, uh, you know, biting my nails on a shipping situation. So because I had, I had bought both of those pieces in June of 2020, it did not arrive to my house until August from California to Texas. So I was... <laughs> I was just beside myself and I couldn't tell Casey, couldn't tell, you know, I told my husband, but I really couldn't tell anybody just how stressed out I was about the situation with these two gorgeous oil painted pieces that were somewhere in the United States Postal Service system. And I had no idea where, <laughs> didn't know if they were coming to me or not. So just the sense of relief when this uh when this finally arrived and you know kirk was awesome like i didn't i don't i don't blame the 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 dealer at all but it was i remember it being like three weeks out from when they told me that they had shipped it that i sent him a note like hey <laughs> um so i don't have these pieces yet do you did you guys go ahead and ship them out and just you know having this conversation and it's just one of those nail, nail biting situations that every collector has uh, at some point in time in, in the time that you spend collecting that you just, you're just afraid that piece is not going to show up. Mm -hmm. So, but I love this one because it's poison Ivy. She's probably my number two behind wonder woman character that I collect. It's clearly her as an Eve, the apple, the snake, mm -hmm. uh, the Garden of Eden, the trees. I feel she's more a Lilith. Lilith. Mm -hmm. Could be Eve, could be Lilith. You, you know, you never know. But just the beautiful, you know, reds from the apple, from the hair, and the composition with the greens, her costume, the tree, the snake. That, yeah, this is, this is already one of my more commented on uh, pieces of art within CAF. So... Yeah, James is one of the comments on this too. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. awesome. You, you know, the uh, it's the mail system has just been totally crap for the you know for the last six to eight months. I've heard more horror stories from collectors and and dealers, and I've gotten more email inquiries than I've ever gotten. You know, about is this guy an okay person? Because I've been waiting two months for the artwork to get here. They said they've shipped it. Yeah, you know the, the tracking number. I plug it in. It doesn't say where it is, and it, as if it's never even been shipped. And a uh, little bit, you know, in every case, I haven't had anything, uh, anybody who's lost anything. Yeah. And and everybody's always followed up with me to let me know that the art eventually arrived. But uh, yeah, it's just been a nightmare. Anything going in through USPS has been terrible. I I wouldn't ship a piece of artwork through USPS at all right now yeah. until this thing gets resolved. Now, I was getting Christmas cards. Yeah, you know, middle of February. So, yeah, and the the opposite is I've I've spoke with a few USPS you know workers, and they they say, "Oh man, we are working, we're working so hard," and yeah. it just that's heartbreaking because mm -hmm. my wife, we definitely want our pieces, and we're worried about it. But like, just to know uh, from a personal level, and someone like you know, human to human and face to face, they're working so hard it's not like they're just tossing our junk to the yeah. side and i mean we'll still be worried but it's nice to hear that they they're working double time so yeah exactly no it's uh uh it, it's been a tough time very tough time i mean I, i've again like i said more horror stories about mail than ever in the past and uh i don't know it's it, it isn't fun hopefully no. it'll be over soon got four pieces incoming via U.S. mail. So you've just terrified me. I appreciate it. <laughs> They're working hard. I received them. All, okay. it was fine in the end. It just, it just took a while. Jason Coates. Yes, exactly. That's the Lilith that I'm talking about always. Yeah. Always. That's my favorite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, one uh, thing I forgot to mention that, that, 
recliner behind me is not usually there, but I put it there as a gallery viewing recliner in oh. honor of Dino's gallery viewing room. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Like, I mean, it's fabulous, but whew, I mean, man, that's some dedication. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, I'm just trying to uh, match Dino's room. I mean, so we'll see. Yeah, I was just seeing if I could find that video from Dino. I don't think I've got it. Um, it, it I'll move it as soon as the show's over. It's, it's just not normally not right there. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, oh, that's digress. funny. No, no, that's all right. Williams, that's my husband. Ladies are oh, killing it. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I don't think my husband has commented. He's probably not even still on. I'm but... surprised he even logged on. <laughs> That's cute. Oh my god. Yeah, Come I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was hoping I could dig up that uh, little Dino video, but I don't have it on my computer any longer. It's so uh, cute. He's sitting in the swivel chair, and he has art on all four walls on the back of the door. And, and the roof, so he could just, I mean, that is some serious dedication. I think somebody asked earlier about like how we keep our art. Unfortunately, I don't have enough of my art framed. It's still vast majority in portfolios. I told my husband for my birthday, May, I'm like, just, just framing money. Like, let's just get some of these framed and up on, I have a great like corner area in my office. I'd love to put some art up on it and needs just, art. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, uh, but I mean, you got, you guys understand, you, you know, James and Billy, you understand it's either that money to chase new art or it's that money sometimes more than the piece itself to frame it. It's just, it's unfortunately part of the, mm -hmm. part of the hobby. Yeah, no, Especially, very, uh, very true. It's gonna be Sorry for nice. keeping you for so long, you Bill. Oh, no, 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 it's, that's fine. I, I'm, I'm just mad I can't find that video. I swear I saved it because I wanted, I knew I'd want it one day it, it was the dino's video was the only one that ever got me uh a mark on youtube against me for uh, copyright infringement because he played that uh that music in the background so it was oh, oh yeah um, yeah and so it, if you ever find it on their interview it's actually the music is dropped out because i had to mute that oh, whole section wow. of the of the clip so we play that game a little bit on some of our Facebook groups that we're pretty active in. That if mm -hmm. you're going to do a video, you wait a good like 10, 15 seconds yeah. before you hit the play, the play on the song, just to you know try to avoid that that issue. Yeah, no. And I, actually, I got I got I forgot about that. I did get one of Jordan's clips from last night got uh, flagged. The uh, the Cantina one. For that little, little, you know, six or seven second meme, his cantina music, which which started like in the middle of this of the of the clip, uh, got got that uh, video flagged for a copyright violation too. So before it was even really published, YouTube already had flagged it. So they're definitely on the ball with that kind of stuff. Yeah, they are. I mean, that's great. It protects the artists. And, oh yeah. You know, I I completely understand why they're doing that, but. Sometimes it makes it a little less fun for, for those of us out there just trying to have a good time on our videos. And, yes. You know. Yes, it does. Yeah. And let's see, there was one other question that I did skip over when I saw it. Where was it? I think it was just a question of, do you, do you guys hang a lot of art or do you, you know, frame it or do you keep everything in portfolios? What's, what's most common for you both? Go ahead. I try to frame a, a chunk. I mean, I have, um, some pieces from a friend who drew my husband as Superman and then my Black sorry, Queen. as Black Queen. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one definitely, the frame job definitely costs more than the piece of art, which was my first Adam Hughes at my first Comic Con. Um, but I have a few down my hallway that are just kind of in um, regular frames. Um, nothing that's UV protected, but. Uh, they're, they're not sunlight, so, but yeah. there's like a huge chunk that are in my portfolio. Mine are mostly in portfolios right now. Uh, looking forward to some more framing soon. I have, a, you know, just a couple of things framed, but I've got this nice corner wall in my office that I hope to hang a lot of my favorite pieces on soon. So, you know, but it's got to be, you know, this is a conversation amongst collectors. It's got to be behind museum glass. It's got to have a mat to keep it away from 
the glass so you're not you know harming the the actual art itself and mm -hmm. so it, it's just that's a whole other job in and of itself i have a couple of pieces around and and top loaders that i like to see but i know that's not necessarily the best way to store them long term so right. i mean yeah. if they're out of sunlight it's fine yeah try to keep them out of sunlight um and you know this is a great opportunity to walk down memory lane and see some of those pieces and pull them back out and you know but mm -hmm. sometimes the chase is more important than um framing the piece itself let's face it um so hmm. but like the true addict always yeah true <laughs> addict. i mean neither one of us have ever sold a single piece that we've collected i have yet to sell however let's however, talk about when she's when in Jill, my will, when Jill starts, <laughs> she's in my will that I get her art. So it's entirely true. There is a there is a line item in my in my will that has Casey receiving all of my art, and um, sadly enough, I kind of use calf a little bit for some of the the pieces I've recorded to just understand the potential value behind mm -hmm. behind my collection. I can't I can't be alone in that morbid. Uh, that morbid curiosity sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's always good to, you know, see, there's so many segments here that are going to make sense in that uh, show we do, James, where it's, you know, it's the framing. It's it's how to make sure that your art is going to go to the right place if something were to ever happen to you. There's, there's so many topics that we really just kind of, you know, brush over, uh, you know, really quickly on these shows that I know that when we, when we get this other show started, that we'll be able to address them in more detail. So that's going to be fun. Well, I plan on just doing five segments of the NFTs. <laughs> yeah. Please no. Yeah. Please don't do that. Not touching it. Not touching it. No, so. no, we'll let the dealers handle that uh, that side of the conversation. And, and the artists, too. I mean, I get it. But, uh, yeah, I'm not even going to go there. Not even going to go there. Yeah. I've had enough of those right. of NFT conversations. But... Uh, uh, Jill, Casey, this has been a lot of fun. I wish Khalil could have made it through to the end. Oh. Yeah, there's a you know where everybody thought Khalil was going to be here for the whole thing, and even Jason was missing on him just recently. But um, yeah, <laughs> I think we had a great time with them, without them. Well, we, you know, it's it's all good. We'll we'll have fun no matter what. I was very nervous. But oh, not a problem. It, 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 these are very laid back. Yeah. yeah Last thing I'll say, Bill, um, on yeah. the next Dueling Dealers, figure out a way to get Khalil in one of your memes. He deserves it. <laughs> well, I, I do have uh, that screen grab right now, so he, he might find his way into one coming it. up tomorrow. And, and yeah, if you... Uh, if I shut. You, <laughs> yes. Exactly. Looking like he's asleep in bed. I mean, it looked like he had a bed frame behind <laughs> him. But, uh, but yes, I can tell you that I've worked really hard on the first meme that's going to be in the show tomorrow. We're even going to show it before round one starts. It's, I don't know. Uh, to me, it's, it's, my, it's my masterpiece. So I hope everybody uh, <laughs> tunes in. Even if they just, just to see that one, you, you're going to love it. You're absolutely going to love it. So. I'm going to NFT your meme, and then I'm going to claim it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, that's all right. All right. You can, you can they come to the elbow. Why not you? It's great. <laughs> uh, but again, thank you everybody for tuning in. Jill and Casey, thank you. James, Khalil, wherever you are, thank you for for doing this Please. and hosting it with me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anytime. Thank no, you, Bill. I really pleasure. appreciate this. Yes. And not a problem. You guys, have a good night. You, and everyone in the chat, have a good night. Yes. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>